Hey guys, everyone, welcome back to the Christmas Tournament's Grand Finals between Russia against Ukraine, Imperialist against Mr. Smog in the best of seven. And the first map we're going to see is gonna be East Fold. And so far, I'm assuming we're gonna see a random mirror. Yes, that's gonna be the case. Okay, let's get right into the game. Number one. saying right now in the global chat uh, what is the what is the start from Mordor? should he play super defensive with, with the orcs you know place them like you do all the time in front of the slaughterhouses try to keep them alive or would you also send some units forward at the beginning of the game Zolas? Uh, I think you have to keep everything at home otherwise you always have the risk of losing a farm and Mordor can't afford that yeah so both players starting also with the war chant Mordor is not starting with the Eye of Sauron. So I guess we already have a little bit of intel on this matchup because um, Imperialist and I actually played this one yesterday in our little uh, map showcasing stream, right? Yeah. So it's probably going to be two orc pits into the Harajan Palace for him. Yeah, I think so as well. He's already starting with the second orc pit. And Mr. Smog right now has only one half of the Kingsman and the first unit he's turning into the Ganzabad Warriors. Uh, it looks like he's going for the creep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's gonna go for the creep. Which is interesting, right? So normally you can tell that the players are playing a bit more offensively against Mordor Faction. So yeah. He's playing it safe. Which is reasonable in a tournament. Oh, the Thrallmaster. Oh, oh my that god. That was close. That was close. It's the worst feeling, by the way, if you lose the Trollmaster, even if every other unit is alive, you're gonna yeah. lose the entire battalion, unfortunately. Haradrim Palace, like you was predicting it, Solas, after the second Orc Pit. Hmm. And now we have some Spearman units and Gandabad Warriors from Mr. Smog. He might also go for the second Hall of the Kingsman pretty soon, I'm assuming. Mm. Oh yeah, he actually didn't go for a fourth farm, did he? Mm, no, I didn't see. Okay, that's a bit unusual. Yeah, three mills into the second Hall of the Kingsman, actually, from Mr. Smog. The orcs, they will be just taken down. I mean, so far, but, Mordor um, was untouched, but... Yeah, I think it's good. He spotted where the first units from Engma are. He knows what's going on, what's coming, and he has a free way through the middle now. Yeah. But the extra overs and the Gandabeds, they will be ready to defend. In the meantime, Haradrim Palace is level 2 and he's, you know, deciding to get some Corsars of Umba on the field first. Oh. What a builder. builder. Oh, yeah. Mordor, I mean. Nice watching. Rip. Oh, he's taking so much damage. Trying to lure the units into the troll. But the oh, troll will take care of this, <laughs> of this builder now. Will he? Will he? Nah, he's fast. He's fast. Nice. Good save. Uh, good save, actually. The signal okay. fire is getting captured by Mr. Smog in the middle of the map. And so far, actually, nothing crazy happens, but I think Mr. Smoke is gonna go for an offensive push now with those units. And remember, Warchand is still being available for both the players, guys. Mm -hmm. And he should be able to take down the slaughterhouse, actually, right? I mean, you can pretty much target the troll, if Risky. I'm not mistaken. Oh, troll is he's using fire bombs. Yeah, troll is dead now from the battalion. Nice save here. 
That's good. He made his fourth farm at the troll air in the meantime, yeah. which is good. And now he just has to defend this. He needs some lances, though. He doesn't make any. He doesn't have anything. But there um, are no wolf riders right now, so I think... I mean the horses. Oh uh, yeah, he has only one battalion in between. You mean uh, Mr. Smog, right? No, I mean Mortar should have made Harajim lances, oh. the horsemen. Ah uh, yeah, of course. He's going for it, but they're not gonna be in time. And the first orc pit has been destroyed already. The slaughterhouse should mm. be going down, probably. Uh, uh, nice damage. Yeah, yeah, you will get it. So nice push here from Mr. Smog. Yeah, but I don't hate it for Imperialist. Yeah. I mean, losing an Orc Pit always looks bigger than it actually is, in my opinion. I mean, I think it's not a big deal to lose the or to lose the Orc Pit there, but the Slaughterhouse, if you could save the Slaughterhouse, it would be actually really great. Indeed. And in the meantime, we have much more units. So far, Mortal Player Imperialist was not able to deal any kind of economic damage to Mr. Smog. Uh, the Lancers are taking care of the Extroverse. And Moro is moving through the middle. Yeah, those units are still buffed. So what do you think about this many Corsars? I mean, but he has only one, right? If I'm not mistaken. Only one. So. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, this is the little phase in the game where Moro probably has the best chance to do damage. And that is exactly now when the Corsairs are pretty much at their strongest. That's right now. So he should definitely make one more and rally it across the map. Smoke is going to demolish. Mm -hmm. uh, also creeping now at the top side, the works. And it's a bad fight to take, in my opinion, for the motor player. Could be better. The lances aren't here. And now, yeah. Actually, oh, there we go. Oh, nice. Oh, Nefelvins, oh. nice one from Mr. Smug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice but timing, protecting the extroverts. I think it's still alright for motor. Oh, but he's gonna lose the battalion, unfortunately. But he's gonna win the fight. It's okay. But Smokos in the meantime fighting for the map control. This is gonna be the third war creep he will be securing for himself. And Moro yeah. was not able to creep anything just yet. But like you said, at the, uh, like a couple of minutes ago, the slaughterhouse at the bottom right side, uh, unspotted from Mr. Smok, so he's gaining mm -hmm. actually a decent amount of resources. I, yeah, I feel like um, Imperialist had a bit more window for damage here in the middle if he just rallied like one more Corsair battalion across or something now Smok is free to move out again yeah <clears throat> and also troll cage is coming up what do you think about the decision of a uh, troll cage good decision i think drama trolls are very scary for Angma. because there are there is no way actually you can negate the fear right mm -hmm. the and fight. it's just very hard to touch them if you keep them in your orcs uh, the slaughterhouse should be taken. No, never mind. Ah, he will be able to take it down, most likely. Yeah, but so far every slaughterhouse that Smok has killed has come at the price of at least two battalions, right? And he and was he not even doesn't... able to take it. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that's gonna be that's close. Okay. There is one unit still remaining. The troll was hitting it. Oh my goodness, not even close. Come on. That's an undead slaughterhouse. <laughs> In the meantime, Smok is also creeping at the bottom right side of the troll. But he's pressuring nicely. I mean, on the other side, he was not un he was oh. pretty much untouched so far. Look at that. The troll just killed the pikemen from Smog, and now the orcs are fucked as well. Yeah, they're not going to be able to do anything about wow. it. Or oh, kind of sacrifice a couple of units without taking anything in return. Um, if you take a look into the command points and power points, Mr. Smog, the Engma player, has 550 command points after and 5 power points collected after Warchant and the Felvins. On the other side, three and a half power points collected by Imperialist after having Warchant and Eye of Sauron. And just like Smog, he's also sitting on 550 command points right now. I gotta say, Shanks, the last two big things for Smog weren't really going well. He barely couldn't kill that slaughterhouse, then he lost two battalions to the troll. If this doesn't get stuff done, then this is looking pretty decent for Mortar if he yeah. gets a drummer out. He's trying to get halfway out already. Haradrim Palace is getting upgraded to level 3. Uh -oh. And we know that the Drama Trolls in combination with the Haradrim Arches they are pretty strong. Gonna... Uh. Okay. Slaughterhouse has been destroyed. Warchan was used offensively, but those units are way, way off position. Mm -hmm. Actually, great push here from Mr. Smog. 
but he's gonna lose, like you said, uh, again, many, many units. And, you know, what do you think? Imperialist Warchan was definitely not needed there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was sighing a bit. Um, I think if he defends this without the Warchant, the counterattack is so strong by him with the Warchant plus Drama Troll. Yeah. But uh, even with just the Drama Troll, I think Imperialist can make something happen. But it's very important that now he doesn't fall into a little cat and mouse game where Engmar just keeps sending stuff and he keeps defending. Engma is also now who also on the field, coming through the mm -hmm. middle with those hillmen. Uh, here's a massive fleet right now, command point wise. So 675 command points by Mr. Smog against 525 by Imperialist, who is, by the way, four power points away from unlocking the industry. Okay, oh, I think, is he going for the palace? Mm, her other marches are coming. Ah, uh, Miss Rally. The Drama Troll has the raw ability available though. Yeah. Ah, that's too early. Oh, uh, did actually nothing. I think he's gonna focus on the slaughterhouses. Yeah. Oh, Builder. Rip. Oh, Builder has been taken down. Waldo getting level 2 now. That means uh, he's only one level away from getting the pillage. Drama Troll has to be careful though. Quite. Oh, oh Felvin. Nice Felvin. Should be able to take him down. Okay. And he's actually not getting a second Drama Troll out just yet. Hmm. I mean, on the bright side, Imperialist has still a couple of untouched slaughterhouses at the bottom right side of the map. Yeah, he is on six farms right now, I think. That's yeah. still enough. Seven, actually. Um, and, yeah, what's been continuing all game long is that Smog just keeps trading armies for slaughterhouses. Yeah. He's running home again with, like, right now he has three, four battalions. Uh, if he should be able to take take down this mill, maybe now. Nah, never mind. Would be nice. This is almost level two. Hmm, okay, now we have dark rangers. Yeah. What do you think about dark rangers against Haradrim archers? Well, the direct comparison doesn't really matter in this matchup. It's just mm, I would say Engmon needs their rangers more than Mordor needs Haradrim archers in this matchup. Yeah, especially look with at the Felvins. army. It's like. 90% archer right now, I think. That's very vulnerable to long shot. And we have also snow trolls on the field, so that's oh, from wow. Mr. Smog. Mm -hmm. And there are not any Easterlings around the army. From, uh, he has There's one battalion one now. And the drama troll is gonna join also now from the troll cage. Uh, I think he's CP blocked, so he can barely not get him. Uh, there we go. We go, he's coming on the fields, and the Felwind is gonna be on cooldown for the next big fight. So, and the Rangers are still only level one. The long shot is not gonna be available any anyway. And I think if Imperialist actually waits for the Drama Troll, he will have the mm -hmm. buff advantage. Snowbind mm -hmm. is gonna be picked actually from Mr. Smog. It kind of depends on the on the positioning, I think, with the Easterlings, because those Snow Trolls they can still do some work. At the end, there are just too many Orc Arch, they are quite weak in mm -hmm. defense, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a very fragile army, but let's okay. see how it goes. I mean, he has some Haradrim archers in between this army. Long oh, shots? Long shot. He's not dodging. It's not enough. Oh, one almost is not enough. strong enough. But look, he was almost one-shotting them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, fight continues. Nice positioning with the Easterlings. I mean, he has also the, le the leadership for the ex-trovers uh, with the Walter. The Dark Range is obviously not getting any leadership from Walter. Fight continues. Nice move here from Smog, taking almost the entire battalion of those Haradrim archers. Easterlings are gone now. No front line, no, no, no Easterlings in between. Snow trolls, they are level 2, the charge attack is available. Oh, nice diving in. Not taking any damage from those crossbowmen. In the meantime, he's losing a Lancer battalion in the south. Yeah. There's level 3 pikes. He lost everything oh, there. He's calling it. Yeah, he's actually gonna give up now. And okay. that means the game number one will be won by the Engma player, Mr. Smog, boys. But it is not the end of the world. Mr. Smog has to win at least three more games. And as we have, you know, seen at the beginning of the game, Imperialist Wars faction is Mordo. Let's hope that he's not gonna get Mordo again from picking the random. Not a bad game to start even if you're imperialist i think uh, there were definitely moments where he could have easily taken the lead in this game if he just made a few better decisions 
Yeah. Um, but we do need to do now with a second guess. We need to spin our wheel. Uh, but first of all, everyone who was betting on uh, Mrs. Mock, obviously, getting the points. Gonna need 30 seconds. Okay, and we're gonna spin the wheel now. So we need to first of all remove the map Eastfold. And the next map is gonna be... Jungle, calling it. Westfold. <laughs> Westfold. Oh, fuck. Um, now, we can actually jump right into the game number two, but... Okay, boys. Best fault. I mean, his fault was also the least favorite um, map, actually, alongside with Erich in this tournament so far. So, also one of the most banned maps, actually, in this tournament. So, apparently, mm -hmm. people don't like to play on it. Uh, Westfold, on the other side, was played much more often. He needs to choose this with the hammer. Hammer, by the way. Choose the one with the... Choose the one with Thor's hammer. Janda, welcome to the stream. The Ginga Co. Panzer is poor, broke, can only bet 40 points. <laughs> Alright, guys. Alright, custom one. And look at this, Imperialist is gonna pick elves now, boys. I mean, that's one way to avoid getting murdered, obviously. And Mrs. Mock is gonna pick random, so Mrs. Mock is feeling quite confident. Okay. I mean, Imperialist picking Elves increases the chance of a very broken matchup if Smog gets Mordor. Or Let's Goblins. See. That too, yeah. But I think being the better player means obviously that you can actually still win an underrated matchup. And I think, oh, that's oh. gonna be the case. <laughs> yeah, Elves <laughs> against Goblins, boys. This is interesting. Um, not nearly as hopeless as with Mordor, obviously, especially in this map. All right, guys, on the left side of the map, we have the blue goblin player, Mr. Smog, being one over ahead, getting the uh, goblin faction from picking random. And on the right side, we have the green elven player, Imperialist, from Russia. He was pre-picking the elven faction, actually. He lost the game number one with the Mordor faction against Engmar. This is the map Westworld and the game number two. Fast Rex from the elf. Not the favorite structure placement, personally, but it's also, gonna work. Also against goblins, I think it's not gonna be necessary. I mean, I agree. I think he's gonna go for the creep. He's also pinging and telling us, okay, I mean, we see that, but thank you for your help, Imperialis, I guess. <laughs> I think he wants to say that he has the red bug where you can't build where you want. Ah, okay. Maybe. And yeah, he's indeed going for the pikes, so I'm assuming he's gonna go for the creep first. What? And. He, it looks like he's gonna go for the creep in the middle of the map, the troll. Because he mm. meets the waypoints now from the barracks already. Okay, okay. Well, what do you high think about risk, that? high reward, I guess. Yeah, because if Mr. Smog scouts that, he can actually even steal that. Mm -hmm. And that could be like an early GG. <laughs> yeah. And it's not unusual to send your first goblins across the map in this case. And uh, actually... I completely missed that. Smog went for a two tunnel into two goblin cave build. That's not normal. So remember when I told you yesterday on your stream that this is a build that the Russians like? Mm -hmm. They make a lot of goblins off of those two caves and then they come in from a forward tunnel, which is currently built in the top east. Yeah. Top right side. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. But on the bright side for the album player, since Mr. Smog is not sending his goblins forward, he will be getting this creep for himself easily. Oh, is he doing the trick where he wants to lure the troll into the base of the goblin when the lair is gone? Oh, really? Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, yes, he's doing it. That's uh, 1.09 yeah, tactic. Yeah, I have seen this in the 1.09 tournament, but he failed. Oh, <laughs> he failed. Shit. So painful. He failed. I've, I've seen it, actually, when we were, you know, having the Isildur's Air tournament. Archangel, one of the experts of BFME2, was always doing that, and it was so powerful. 
Mm. But on the other side, we also have to add that the structures in BFME 2 are by far not as resistant as in Rise of the Witch King. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he was pretty much, one cave troll was able to kill the fortress. <laughs> Why is he fighting the troll with his pikes now? He could have just gone home and yeah. now he's losing one tree. And he's going to lose the pikes okay. also now to the goblins. Yeah. One Malon tree has been taken down by those goblins. Warchan was used from Mr. Smok on them and that's looking actually really bad for the album player. Uh, you got to keep in mind that Smok's start was also not the most economic. And, and he's going for the spider already. Call. Oh yeah. I think that's a bit too early. Maybe. What is the Alvin player doing? He's going for the stable with literally 350 command points. It's, yeah, a bit early. Because he's probably gonna lose now more Malon trees, even though he has now some archers in position. And we know that they're gonna be very, very good against the goblins. Huh. Man, I wish that troll trick worked. <laughs> yeah, I think that could be, you know, one of the most funniest things because it, he would be able to deal so much damage there. Mm -hmm. But even yeah. if the troll trick would work, I think he would be sacrificing the build at the end of the day, right? So I'm yeah. pretty sure he's gonna kill the builder first. Okay, Smok gets a whole archer battalion over yeah. there. Bad positioning, bad micro from Imperialist. Mm -hmm to get those arches in between the Lorien warriors. Um, so far he has only one archer battalion actually left on the field. I see one Lorien warriors and uh, one pikeman, but that's pretty much it. Will he be able to take down the Malon tree? He's trying his hardest using poison blades and aggressive stance, but it's not gonna be enough. Uh, spider pit is actually level 2 already and we're gonna get some goblin spider riders now from Mr. Smok. Okay. Luckily, he has some pikes, and as I said, we still have rallying call, and he needs to use it right now. I would love if his lances just went straight to this little group of units in the middle, and yeah. goes aggressive. But he needs to make a use now, because the Warchan is loading, and it's gonna be awaitable soon. That means you're not yeah. gonna have any kind of advantage um, once this happens. Okay, Spider Riders will evacuate in the north, I think. Yeah. yeah. To deal with the Lorien warriors i think in a 1v1 situation the spider riders they should be able to win against lances right we're gonna find out now yeah okay. oh with the rallying call it's a bit more even yeah okay get back into the into the cave oh nice trample just before they were yeah i mean they still survived but not many units are left he's trying to hold warchan is gonna be available now in the next couple of seconds for mr smog mm. Lancers are putting in some nice work. They should be just fighting the spiders. Okay, let's see. It's a bad fight to take for Mr. Smog. But actually, they are pretty strong with the poison blades. Yeah, yeah. They are very strong. But any rider you can kill is, of course, good for the elves because the goblin cannot heal it up. Yeah, and he lost many spider riders there. And he should be able to take down the tunnel as well. But he gotta be. Nah, he's not over committing to that, which is the right call. Yeah, since he has only one Lancer Battalion on the field just yet, he's going for the second mm -hmm. one. Six power points collected for the Alvin player, three and a half collected for the Goblin player. Okay. It's not looking bad for the Elf, in my opinion. Yeah. The only thing I would love to see is if he goes for Linton Horse Archers right now. But uh, that's probably Imperialist being a BFME 2 player, not exactly sure what that unit does. So that's no surprise. I mean, they are very strong, actually, against... Uh... Cavalier, Cavalier, right? I mean, they are pretty much strong against everything that the Goblin offers right now. Exactly. exactly. You can still trample down those Goblins. Okay, looks like the Spider Riders want that level 2 tree. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the PowerPoint choice? I mean, what should the Elven player go for? With 10. I think you always want to go for Enshrouding Mist. It's, um, you can't cancel it as Goblin, right? It's a guaranteed buff, or day buff, rather. Yeah. If you go for Elven Woods, then there's always the risk of the Goblin cancelling it. With the Tainted Land, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Goblins, they need only 5 power points, while you need 10. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on the bright side, Elven Woods, unlike the Tainted Land, also grant you Fear Resistance, which is not going to do anything for you in this matchup. Yeah. Okay. One battalion of those spider riders is pretty damaged. But actually, 
Pressure-wise, we can tell that Mr. Smog has still the upper hand. Uh, 450 command points against 500. Okay, big war chant in the middle. Let's see. There's two Malon trees. They should be definitely going down. He's just gonna demolish. Would you demolish it, you know, right from the beginning, or would you try to solve a bit and you know build up yeah. yourself a defense before you demolish? Yeah, in this case, I think buying a little time is okay for the army to arrive, but it's a hard call. Oh, Spider Rider, one battalion will be. Oh, never mind. Oh yeah, he's gonna be oh, taken yeah, down. It's dead. And he, has, he doesn't have any pikes, so the lancers they can actually keep trampling. But you gotta be careful. One of those battalions is almost dead. Oh yeah. Please make a well. Yeah. It's going for another one even. Well, uh, you know, not that bad. Uh, he only got two Malon trees, and I think the elf didn't have to use his rallying call once again. So now, please do that counter attack. Yeah, and he will have ten power points now. And starting miss is gonna be ready for the next big fight, and he will have the buff advantage alongside with the rallying call. On top of that, debuffing the enemy units makes your units much, much stronger. Obviously, mm -hmm. they are strong at the first place. Uh, we have still many creeps left, but Mr. Smok is now taking down the war creep at the bottom left side. Uh, he's not going. Yeah, he should be definitely making use. Mirror of Galadriel is finally coming up. That means those two almost dead battalions of Revendal Lancers, they will be recovering, which is really nice. Um, command point wise, Elven player is still struggling. In Shrouding Mist was picked now from Imperialist. And we have Keith Bats picked from Mr. Smok. Okay, yeah. Necessary. Um, so even though the elf is not doing the ideal move right now, it's still not terrible to just defend in this matchup. Unfortunately, the elf can't just get away with that. Yeah, and yeah, I mean he's playing super defensively, which I can understand. He's being one all behind, you know. He wanna just he doesn't wanna mm -hmm. risk anything. Mm -hmm. And before he's gonna go for a big oh, oh. nice one. Spider links, spider riders are almost dead. And he will be now capturing the signal fire for himself, which is nice. Ah, okay, we don't have any more creeps left, actually. Mm -hmm. Imperial is going for a lot of lances. He has just made his fourth battalion. Mm, I don't like this. Nah, it's there's not enough goblins to justify that, but... Yeah. We'll He's going now for the second barracks. It's, at which point, Solas, would you start to make some Mirk boots in this matchup? Mm, pretty late. I think Lorien archers are good enough. Um, you only need mercs when the goblin makes a lot of half trolls. Okay, would you at this when you would be you know imperialist right now? Would you go for the horse archers after seeing uh, so I many spider riders? I would have gone for them much earlier, but now I think Smok has had enough bad moments with his spider riders that he's not going to make any more. Yeah. So I think Lintons yeah. aren't needed anymore right now. I would just go Glorfin Glorfindel. And Smok in the meantime is moving through the middle with half throw Swordsman <clears throat> and Azok is also on the field. Okay, Elf is in position. Uh, but look at this, you know, Arch um, Lancers, they are not close to the well, they are not recovering. Oh, yeah. It's a big mistake. Now he's sniping the stream, listening, nice. <laughs> Warchan was used. Big Warchan again. And he has also some half throw Spearman units. So Lancers, they should be super careful here. Does Smok want the army fight here? No. He's running. You can't win that fight, I think. Against, no. that, many, against that many archers. And in all out fight, he has also the Enshrouding Mist, obviously. Tainted Land was picked from Mr. Smok, by the way. Which is smart, right? Because now yeah, he yeah. knows Rallying Call is on cooldown. Uh, and after the buff is gone, he can go again. Use the advantage with the Tainted Land. That's the other dynamic of this matchup. You as Goblin know, the Elf doesn't really want Elven Woods, so if you pick Tainted Land, there's a high chance he's not going to cancel it. He's going to lose the Spider Riders to the tower. <laughs> Entire battalion has been taken down. No. Mm -hmm. And he's going to put Arches inside. He's also upgrading that with the Silverton Arrows. Pretty slow game. Builder from Mr. Smog will be taken down at the bottom left side as well. Oh, and that's some wasted cave pads, I think. Yeah, he's just going to disengage. He has the mobility advantage. After all, Swordmen are pretty strong, but there are just too many units to deal with. And even with the cave pads, Alvin player should... Oh, he's almost gonna... He can actually fight, right? With the one who is quite healthy. No, no. No? Half-trolls win. Okay. 
So in a 1v1 situation, hearts against half troll, half troll win in this case, right? Yeah, always run away. <laughs> okay. Azok level 2 moving forward. Uh, we're gonna take a look into the current power points and command points. Imperialist has 785 command points. It's gonna be a bit less now because he's all about to lose a couple of those Malon trees. Six and a half power points collected after rallying call and enshrouding mist. On the other side, Mr. Smog, 625 command points. He's being command points capped. Uh, Warchant, Tainted Land and Cave Pads, plus four power points collected. Okay, I think Smog knows that there's not a whole lot of windows left for damage, so he makes this little lumber mill outpost in the north, mm -hmm. just so he's economy-wise sure to go into the late game, I think. But a lot of Lance is moving towards it now. Yeah. And the, the question is, if you reach the super late game, because now the barracks from Imperial is being level 2, and sooner or later we're gonna get those Mirkwoods on the fields. And the question is, if this goes super late, can the Goblin Faction beat the Alvin Faction? That's the big question. Mm. You know, you need to you deal need with against the best archers in the game. Azok might be in trouble. Oh, he's fast. Good harassment from Imperialist. He splits up every Lancer for an individual building here. Gets a lot of damage. Yeah. And he has um, Mr. Smog had already so many Lumber Mills. Mm -hmm. And uh, from all this damage, Imperialist is already pretty close to Eagle Summon. Yeah, and there is no counter right now to that. I mean, Eagles can literally smash the entire army. Or the Fortress. Or the Fortress. And he's gaining so much from killing those structures and killing those units. Nice micro here with those lances from Imperialist. He has so many of them. One, two, three, four battalions actually. Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful here. He might lose one of these. Trying to get in safety. In the meantime, Mr. Smok is just losing so many spider riders here. And also got, you know, those half-troll swordsmen. By yeah. trying to take down those Marlon trees. I think he will regret the spider riders after this game. Didn't yeah. seem to pay off. I mean, he, they did pretty much nothing all game long. Besides giving power points to Imperialist. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you lose those strong units, you're going to give him just more power points. And indeed, 15 power points in Eagles are picks now from the Russian player Imperialist boys. Let's okay, see about so. the use, where he's gonna use it, when he's gonna use it. This is usually the natural end of this matchup when the Elven player reaches his 15 power points. Um, often the Goblin just falls over there. Yeah. Let's see. <clears throat> and for the next fight he will have everything up. Rallying Call, Mist and the Eagles. And has a great army moving forward. I think he's gonna go for an all-out fight now. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to shine actually. Because Tainted Line is on cooldown. Oh, Smog knows it. He makes an arrow tower. Yeah, but is this gonna be enough? That's the question. One tower. Uh, I mean, the fortress and two tunnels are shooting. Three, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. He has three level three oh, tunnels. Oh, Shelob. Okay. Shelob. That's, oh that's actually good. That's really good. I like it because that's a, that's something we don't see that quite often. She can use the Weep, right? The Spider Weep. Slow them down. Yes. Rallying Cold Mists will be used. Eagles. Wildman Summon, wow. What a chaos. Oh my god, it's Fiesta actually. And it looks like... Smoke is winning that fight actually, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has to do the right thing with the eagles now, and I think that is to just kill as many farms as he can. But and the problem is he lost oh. one of those eagles already. Yeah, okay, that's pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not the best way. He lost. He pretty much used every single power point ability there, and he still ended up losing the fights. Not even close, by the way. And the eagles were not able to do much. I mean, he was able to collect three power points from the entire fights, while Mr. Smoke was able to collect more than six power points. Okay, so what went wrong here? First of all, I think the lances were not here in time to just trample the wildman summon as soon as it appeared, and the second Shelob just. Is a pretty good hero. I mean, she's, she a, she's a funny hero, but uh, she's really strong. Yeah. I mean, she's level 1 still. 5,000 health, man. That's quite tanky. <laughs> Mirkwoods are now finally moving forward. And also, nice fight for Mr. Smog because, you know, he was kind of forcing the Elven play in a corner and he couldn't move, you know, not forward. Uh, you can't disengage because of the webbing on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta take, a, take the fight. And he was surrounding him nicely, and on top of that, he was summoning the white man right on top of the army. 
gets a trample on Mirkwoods here. Nice one. Oh, and another one. Ouch, that Ooh, really hurts. That hurts. Uh, actually, okay. was able to save. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're gonna see now Elven player making a statue in the middle of the map. So it looks like he doesn't wanna be around his own fortress anymore, trying to bring the fight closer to Mr. Smug. Um, he's going for the third barracks, by the way, guys. And so okay. far, not a single hero on the field from the Alvin player. Yeah, that's always a big risk, you know. I mean, Mirkwoods are good and all, but if you want to go into the late game securely, then at least make Lordfindle. Yeah, or Halgir could be also good, right? Especially yeah. when you get him level 8 with the Golden Arrow. Of course. And Goblin player can, can't negate. I mean, you can negate that, right? With the God Kill the Goblin King. Level 5, I think. Uh, level 1, level 2 with the Totem. Totem, yes, level 1. No, 2. Azok on the other side is being level 5, great battle reach. I mean, he has the hero advantage. And... Mr. Smog keeps up the pressure. That's something, you know... We can just see that by taking a look into those Malone trees. I don't see a single Malone tree being level 3. On the other side, Smog has, like, many level 3 tunnels. Mm -hmm. I mean, that obviously comes from the super defensive... EJ Parson. Oh, Shelob. Shelob died. Oh, oh really? Yeah, Mirkwood sniped her. DJ Parson ah. just resubscribed for three months. Ahoy, go go Drogon. We had a really nice chance here for our late game, but I think without Shelob, it's very dire oh, again. Oh, Azok will die also now. And Spider Riders too. <laughs> oh, Azok is dead, oh my god. By the way, DJ Parson, my friend, thank you so much for the resub for three months in a row. Appreciate it. Okay, this game is now again under control from the Alvin player. Uh, but the Watcher can change something, right? He's really close, yeah. right? It's only two power points. Yeah, again, especially because there's no heroes. Uh, uh, no, wait. There's, there's Glorfindel now, yeah. Okay, okay. But the, still, I mean... On the level one. A Watcher can still change the game, but... Build has been taken down from Mr. Smoke in the meantime. Um, I like to move now from Imperialis. He's actually moving through the top and through the bot side at the same time, making sure to mm. kill every single tunnel. With the help of Glorfindel, reducing the command points and with that the resource income of Mr. Smog. Uh, 13 power points and 16 and a half, almost 17 power points collected by Imperialists. The Eagles are still on cooldown obviously and full command points by the way for the Russian player guys. Re resource mm. income is definitely looking great. Yeah, he definitely likes his big armies and he's got the goblin base pretty much surrounded now. Yeah. And right now, if I'm not mistaken, that is actually not enough or nothing, actually. <laughs> he has got killed the Goblin King level 3. I mean, he's, all his hope is to get the Watcher summon. He needs one more yeah. power point for that. The Wild Man's gonna be ready soon. War Chance, Tainted Land, and Cave Pet's gonna be ready for the next fight. But he doesn't have any units to spot them. He has only 300 something command points right now. Under his control, at least. I don't know what Imperialis is waiting for, actually. He's just giving time to Mr. literally to Mr. Smog to actually get come back to the game. Ah, he picked the Alvin Wood. So I'm, I'm assuming he's not gonna use it, he's gonna wait for the Tainted Land, right? Mm hmm. And then Probably. Go or he just wants the End Summon, I think. Yeah. He's also going for the End Summon at the same time, so. Okay. Glorfindel, level 3, was just using the Blade of Purity. Pretty strong hero. One of the strongest, actually, in the 1v1 with level 3. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now this army from the album player is looking scary. But again, you know, the Watcher can actually change everything. The Watcher special summon can actually literally take down the entire army from Imperialist. Because you don't want to be grouped at this stage. I think you, can, you need to smell now, right? You need to smell yeah. that the Watcher might be ready. I mean, let's be honest, he has won this game, so now he just needs to think about what can I still do to mess this up. Yeah. And that's one thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the problem is, wait a second, he's being command points kept, so can't go for any ends right now. Ah. Shilop is back on the field, level 3, and Instal Terror will be ready. Uh, even though the Alvin Wood is gonna negate the fear. Mm -hmm. Statues too. Statues too. Mr. Smok is trying to, you know, get back into the game by building some tunnels at the bottom left side, but 
Alvin player is just gonna be able to take them down again. It's a big army here from the Alvin player. And smart move mm -hmm. though, splitting the army in two. That's a pretty scary hit squad over here in the middle. Gorkel has leadership, that's a lot of half trolls. Yeah. Uh, he, has the, he has the Watcher, so I think he's trying to beat him into mm -hmm. coming into coming with all the army he has. Shilop is disengaging. I mean, Shilop can literally go over the hills, by the way, which is quite nice. Yeah, pretty good on this map. Also on the new Forza 5 and 3 map, there are much more hills, right? So you can use them uh, with, the, with the Shilop. True. Okay, guys, Wildman of Dunland Special Summon. Now is the Hour of Truth. Painted Land and Elven Wood will be used to cover that immediately. Watcher is ready. He is looking for a perfect opportunity. Cave pads and boom. Goodbye, Mirk Wood. See you next game. <laughs> They're all gone. All right. But there was only half of the army. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's only one more Mirk Wood left, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm, yes. So not bad after all. He has also the statue up here. Uh, we need to take a look into Gorkil. Ah. He's dead. He's dead now. Was not able to get on the scorpion. Um, uh, Shilop is engaging. Use instant terror um, maybe? Uh, you can't use it there with the statue, right? Doesn't make any sense. Well... He's level 4. Statue will be taken down. Glorfindel has to be careful. After all, pikemen are gonna deal a lot of damage to him. But they are just getting killed from the Mirkwoods. He was also able to save two battalions actually. So they will be recovering over time. I mean, I now, now it's time to shine right? for Imperialist. Now you know, okay, Watcher is on cooldown. What is Mr. Smog, what is Mr. Smog supposed to do now for the next uh, big attack? Shilob sniped again. By oh, Mark no. Wood. And a builder. <laughs> Azok is diving in again. And Eagle's gonna be ready soon. 21 power points collected by Imperialist, boys. Um, really close for the 25. But it's not Just gonna be even Ant. necessary. Just by Ant, man. Yeah. We'll go for the end summon alongside wait a couple of seconds for the eagles just mm -hmm. to secure the kill on the fortress and then it's gg because mr smok is being in a really rough situation where is azok azok was here i hope he didn't die now he's here level almost six well i mean you can summon the eagles and go and right click with glorfin they'll use blade of purity on the fortress also dealing a lot of damage if you don't want to go for the for the ants if you're trying to go for the 25, for some reason. Yeah, Eagle's gonna be ready now. Uh, Mrs. Smoke is going for the Armory, already upgrading that to level 2. Hmm. I don't know if this is gonna do something. Man, Imperialist is really taking his time, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's playing super defensively, right? I mean... I can kind of understand that because, you know, that's the first time he's being in the finals and at the end of the day, if you win the, the tournament, you get $100, so I think in a normal game he would be playing much more offensively. He's being a bit scared. <laughs> I can feel it. He was also asking me like 10 minutes ago before we started if he has time to play one game against you to train. Yeah. yeah. Didn't go well. <laughs> you should have let him win, you know, to boost his confidence. <laughs> Um, as Solas, please, can we focus on Trial Masters with four towers? If so, is it lo logical to make some and stop Angmar rushes? No. So That's a waste of money. But you can, right? You can focus on them. Uh, I don't think target fire works, no. Oh, okay. So then don't even make it. It and works with ranged cash. heroes. You know, if you click with Legolas on the Thrall Master. If it's the first thing you click on a Thrall Master Battalion, then Legolas or other Archer heroes will kill the Thrall. Okay, uh, so it's Eowyn and Eomir, right? <clears throat> With the uh, right no, click I mean on the Archer smite. Heroes. Yeah, I mean, that works too, but, you know, stuff like Lurts or Haldir. Yeah. Okay, boys, we have a tree build on the field coming from the end moods. Uh, Rallying Call will be was used now. Gorkil is back on the field, level 4. And Flute will be used. All the expansions are gone. Eagles are coming. This is... So this is something what I would like to call overkill, <laughs> but he's going for it anyway. And that is absolutely nothing. He has even now the Mirkwoods with the Silvertone Arrow purchased. And that's gonna be game number two and we're gonna have an even score boys. 1-1. One, one. 
Next game will be a tiebreaker. Let's see if Mr. Smog is gonna pick some faction. Because we know, never change a running system. And I'm pretty sure Imperial is gonna stick up to the plan. And will be picking elves again. And, you know, if you pick random, you might get in trouble by running, like, like Sola said, you know, again, by getting again goblins or possibly even worse, Mordor, uh, can look very bad for you. And yeah, Quega, welcome to the stream. Best of seven, yes. Best of seven, guys. Okay, as you know, we need to spin our wheel one more time. So this time we're gonna remove the map Westworld out of the pool. Let's see what's gonna be the map for the next game. Erich! Oh my god, those the best maps first. <laughs> nice. That's a really good elven map. And yeah. I'm in play is probably gonna pick elves again. I need to update the scoreboard real quick, guys. One second. There we go. And we're gonna open now for the next bets. Actually, in the last bets, Imperialis had, had more votes. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Who will win the next game? Against Mr. Smock. Alright guys, now you are able to bet on the outcome of the game. There you go. the heck okay um erich erich so risky sorry viewers <laughs> lol i take elf <laughs> you don't need to be sorry about that okay it looks like panzer is betting on imperialist thank you so much for the follow uh for the bds quagger cheered x7 seven bits for bo7 finals or was it seven rings for the dwarf lords? Seven rings for the dwarf lords. Yeah, dwarves, they didn't get mentioned at all, you know, with the rings. It was only the men. It was only us who are getting corrupted with the power, you know? It means uh, that shows us how weak-minded we actually are, human beings. Open for smoke, yeah? He needs to open one more spot. Thank you for the uh, seven bitties, by the way. We appreciate it. I think smoke is sacrificing a goat right now. For good random or something yeah but i think it's like a victory when you end up winning with random against someone who's picking the factions like it's a win-win situation kind of in my opinion well in your head but yeah in the scoreboard you might in the scoreboard lose. doesn't mean nothing because <laughs> after one week everyone will, everyone will forget it anyway <laughs> or after one day okay so let's see if imperial is gonna pick elves so far he's not picking anything um, ah, he's gonna pick elves. Go. Next map, All game right. number three, will be played on Erich Boys. And yes, Mr. Smok is gonna stick up to the plan and, you know, he's like, I'm gonna pick random no matter what. We need to be kinda lucky. I hope we're okay. not gonna see elves against Mordor, elf against goblins. Elves against Engmar I'm, could be nice, right? I'm calling dwarf. Okay. Let's see. And... Mordor! Oh, oh no! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh no, I mean... Uh, this is gonna be rough for Mr. Smog Boys. This is gonna be rough. Mordor Everything against that Elves. can go wrong, will go wrong, right? Yeah. You have told me on this map, spam factions are really bad, because it's so yes. easy to protect that with the Elves by archers. And he's saying, good luck, have fun, you know, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can say good luck, but not have fun. Troll or Troll Fast Palace. I mean, you can maybe go for something YOLO here, because... Mm -hmm, yeah. Orc Pit's not gonna work for you, if, I, if I'm not wrong. Okay. Is it gonna be Palace start? Yes. I think that's the best choice here. Yeah, he's gonna go for the Palace. Anyways, guys, we have the great model player on the left side, Mr. Smok. He was losing the last game with the Goblins against Elves. Was picking random again. And on the right side, we have the green Elven player, Imperialist who was, for the second time now in a row, picking the Alvin faction. Random is troll. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, but um, you can pick a faction, it's allowed, so... Of course, of course. 
So as an elf right now, you don't want to give Mordor any chance. So I think you just start blind pikes. Because the only thing that Mordor can surprise you with is a troll or a cab, right? Yeah, he's going to start with archers, though. Uh, okay. And in the meantime, Mr. Smog upgrading the Haradrim Palace, three slaughterhouses. Um, what can you do, or what do you have to do here, Solas, with the Mordor faction to win against elves on a map like this? I wish I knew. I mean, it has to be something with lances and corsairs. Some good micro trick, some bad luck for the elf, I think. Something like that. Okay, so you need to kind of rely on the mistakes from elves, even if you yeah. do everything correct. As long as the elven player is playing decent game, you have like little to no chances. Yeah, I mean, I really have no good answer for you. Okay, Orkpit is coming up and the first Haradrim Lancer is gonna join. And now Imperialis is gonna get some pikes as the second unit to protect those archers. As you are at this point, you need to kind of you know predict the movement from Mr. Smog because if he would go for the orc, orc pits, he would have already orcs at your side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good build order too. That's also very safe. Yeah, stable is coming up. Rallying call and war chants are uh, ready. Good stable placement. Oh, don't even try, Smog. Don't even try. Oh, Rallyinko was used. Is he gonna commit to that? That's the question. Oh, he's being surrounded by the pikemen. Taking Bad way idea. too much damage. Oh, it's not, not worth, worth it. it. It's not worth no. it. No. He's gonna lose the battalion now. Um, there you go. <laughs> I mean, kind of wasted Lancer plus Warchant for one Malone tree. And now you mm. don't have anything. Okay, he's making Easterlings because he saw the stables, so he has to make those. Yeah. Of course, you would rather make another Lancer Battalion or more Corsairs, but that's the problem. Now you have to make Easterlings. Yeah. It works. So. And now Imperialis is moving forward. He has still the buffed units from the Rallying Cold. The Orcs, they're gonna pretty much get one-shotted from those Lorian Archers. Um, some Easterlings, but they gotta be careful. As we are able to see, those Lorian Archers are hitting like a truck. And they are not in the Porcupine Formation. Corsairs just arriving in time to be trampled by the lances, I think. <laughs> Perfect timing, but it looks like he doesn't... He's not going for it, actually. Oh, come on. Uh, well, I not. guess that yeah. works, too. Yeah, and there you go. You can't just see this pike plus archer group here in the front of Mortar's base. can just get so much value. Yeah, he's... Is this gonna deal damage over time? Will this be enough to kill it, though? That's the question. We'll be able to kill it, right? Yeah. He was actually able to kill the Malone tree, so... Oh, really? Could be worse. Yeah. And, yeah, this is like a nightmare situation for the Mordor player, Mr. Smog. Yeah. And there is absolutely nothing he can do about it. All he needs to do is kill the Easterlings with the archers and the other units you can trample down. One Easterling battalion is already gone. Oh. oh. Okay, that was lucky. Sometimes this happens, right? Randomly, actually. Yeah. Sometimes run into them, you don't take any damage. Sometimes you touch them and you die. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm sorry viewers, but that's GG. <laughs> that's GG. And that means we're gonna jump right into the game number four. For the first time in this series, Imperialis will have the upper hands. That might actually lead Mr. Smog to change the plan and not, you know, desperately trying to go for the random and hoping for the luck. Because we know Imperialis is gonna pick elves exclusively for the rest of this tournament, of the series. And Mr. Smog maybe has to pick Engmar, Man of the West. Mm -hmm. What's the best faction to play against elves? Told us. Oh, um, well, a lot of people don't agree with me, but I personally would pick dwarves. Yeah, I think the people are not agreeing with you because there are not very great uh, dwarf players. Yeah. And I think that's just, you know, elves, like like a basic knowledge, it's gonna be enough to play this, what he's doing. Make exactly. archers, pick pikemen and protect them. Okay, this is actually a bit uh, sloppy by Imperialist, he's gonna lose a lot now. Ah, actually, yeah, he was able Guys. to... Oh, he's gonna lose What's all happening? the archers. Oh, I don't know about this rallying call, he's gonna lose them, it's gonna be a double win, a win, -win situation for Mr. Smog. Eye yeah. of Sauron. Nice one. Getting the 50% increased combat experience, leveling up those units faster. He can win against the Lancers also, he just needs to fight. They are still being buffed from the Warchant. 
or it's a terrible fight to take for Imperialis. Yeah. And even if Mr. Smog... Oh, look, he's gonna take down an entire battalion. Oh my god, there's two battalions of Archers and one battalion of Revander Lancer against one Haradrim Lancer. More the OP? Question mark? Haradrim <laughs> Lancer is the best Arch Lan uh, Lancers in the game? <laughs> <laughs> What am I watching? Uh, that's called Fiesta. Um, but, I mean, Mr. Smoke is actually coming back to this game. Eight power points yeah. collected by Imperialist, and around the same power points collected by Mr. Smoke because he went for Eye of Sauron, which can again get countered by the um, Enshrouding Mist, and I think that's what Imperialist is aiming for. It negates also the leadership from the Eye. 475 command points against 450 command points, so it's quite even right now. But I think if Imperialist ends up making this mistake two more times, um, Mordor can actually scale into the lead scheme and kind of become obviously much, 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 much harder for the Alvin player to deal with it, right? Yes, uh, we will have to see how this goes now. Big army coming in. It's not yeah. a very strong army. strong army, but it's a lot, and there's some lenses. Oh. Risky, but he's not getting punished for. Uh, he's actually getting punished. Ooh. Oh, he's sacrificing. Yeah, he's gonna lose them now. They were level three also. Oh, that, that's that's a big feels bad, man. He killed a lot of archers. And there is no well, so they won't be recovering over time. Those almost dead battalions. <laughs> Fuck. I think Imperialist lost. Let's see how I think much this time. is gonna snowball now. Yeah, because right now he's not putting any counter pressure, and Mr. Smock is expanding quite nicely. There is a Malone trade at the top right side, by the way, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how much damage Mr. Smog will be able to deal. Uh, I don't know about focusing down the barracks, though. He's gonna lose many, many units. Committing to that. Moving forward. So what's Smog's plan behind this? He's not upgrading his palace, so I would think he's going for Gothmog or Mouth of Sauron. Yeah, I mean, he was going for some hero because last time I checked him, he had like over 1,000... 200 resources. Okay. And Shrouding Mist will be mm. re ready now from the Alvin player. Ah, that's scary. Alba is saying in the chat, so last <laughs> we have called GG three times so far. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. When I mean it's GG then, I mean if he does everything normally without messing up royally, then it's GG. He's going for the troll cage. And Kofmok is joining the battlefields now. Okay. So I'm assuming the plan is going to be to upgrade the Aradan Palace to level 3. And, you know, make some drama trolls. Um, Maybe. If you want drama trolls, why make Gothmok though? I think. Yeah. I mean, on the other no. side, Gothmok is not giving leadership to anyone else besides orcs, right? Yes. Drama troll has no limitations. Maybe for the Easterlings and, you know, for the terror, for the roar ability, obviously. But... I mean, the goblin troll would be nice here, you know, with the goblin pick. Well. The fear. Or they're gonna fight here at the top right side around the signal fire. This is a fight Mr. Smog should not take. Yeah, good catch. Yeah, he's gonna lose a lot here. And yeah, those, creeping those some, sentry units, they are so tanky. Creeping some spiders. It's just getting a lot of power points now. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Smoke is a bit more than two power points away from getting to industry, guys. Which is gonna help him out a lot. And mm -hmm. I think he's gonna go for the creep here. The whites. In the middle right side. I'm pretty surprised um, that he's not aiming towards uh, Haradrim Archers very early. Because that's always what I put my hopes on in this matchup. If I lived that long as Mordor. Yeah. Oh my god, 1v1 uh, situation, Lancers against Lancers, Mordor wins, I think, because he was hitting them a couple of times before they turned. Oh, never mind, mm -hmm. the Vandals are popping off and killing the entire battalion of the Haradrim oh, okay. Lancers. Okay, Gothmog attacking. Yeah, Builder, never mind, he's gonna get in safety. The statue is up on the field, and Alvin player is... Getting the second spider creep for himself. We have no more creeps left on this map. The slaughterhouse will be taken down, most likely. Um, 
Trollkitch is level 2, and he's upgrading the Haradrim Palace to level 3 now. Okay, okay. Yeah, in that case, I really don't understand Gothmog. Like, is the leadership on the orcs really worth it? I don't think so, because, we, you know, you don't really need the Iron Hand against elves. Mm -hmm. um, theory might be do, doing something. Sometimes, yes. But besides that, he doesn't have anything like Pillage or something also. I think Mouth of Sauron would be a better choice, right? Yeah, yeah. With the, with Looks the like doubt. He's doubling down on the attack. He used the war chant and goes in again. But yeah. there's so many archers. And I hope he's not gonna use Eye of Sauron. He's gonna use Eye of Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. It's not doing anything, by the way, because it doesn't scale with the leadership from Gothmog. So it you know, grants you vision, though, because they were around the trees. Maybe that was the reason why Mr. Smog went for it. Okay, so that did nothing. Yeah, and he will be forced to retreat. The rallying call was actually used offensively, so he took something out of it. Went kind of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but obviously he was kind of wasting his Eye of Sauron. Mm -hmm. Well, at least we have Drama Trolls plus Haraji Marches, and I think that is really when this matchup can stabilize at least a little bit. And because also Industry was combo. used on this level 3 slaughterhouse, so he should be oh. boosting his Eco nicely. And he actually has more command points right now, 725 against 635. Uh, Imperialist will have 10 power points collected soon, and Shrouding Mist is gonna be ready, which is gonna nullify the leadership from the Drama Troll, and deep mm -hmm. after enemy units as well. Yeah. Yeah, he should just make a big attack now and get the power points for Eagle Summon. Yeah, and he has obviously much more units. And in an all-out fight, with the advantage of the Enshrouding Mist, he should be easily able to win that fight. Yeah. With that many archers in the back. Especially, it also doesn't have Eye of Sauron to detect anything. Yeah. Okay, Rora ability was actually nice. And getting them off our, out of the thing, uh, out of the mist. And now he can disengage, mm. which is not bad, yeah. actually. It's okay. The builder from Mr. Smog might be in trouble. In the middle? Nah, he's gonna get in safety. Thank you for the follow, Lord by Fendler. the way, Anonym What's Flow. Okay. Okay. Um, so, he just saw that there's industry with Glorfindel, yeah. and at this point, that's like half of his eco. He, he so, lost also Builder, uh, Mrs. Okay. Mock, unfortunately. Um, he's going for the Siege Works level 2, level 3. Yeah. So Black Riders, I think he's yeah. going for. I don't know about Black Riders mm. here. There are just... Yeah, they are, they are the late game choice. Like, that's what your industry money goes into. Yeah, but he has just too many pikemen, you know? And Glorfindel. Yeah, and the problem is, uh, the, by the time they come out, there's going to be an eagle summon to destroy oh, them. Oh, the drama troll is off position. What is he doing? Oh, no. Oh, he's going to lose the drama troll. No more leadership for the Haradrim archers. Gothmog doesn't give any leadership to them. He's only giving leadership to the orcs. Gothmog getting level 2. Uh, Glorfindel running in. Oh, he might be... He uh, needs to be careful. The Gothmog has to attack him, actually. Never mind. Oh, nice. Gothmog is diving in into the archers, dealing a lot of damage with the Fury ability. Glorfindel is taking too much damage. Is heal available? Heal is oh, not available, yeah. and he will be losing that. But we have Eagle Special Summon ready. Okay. Will it be a he nice choice to it. summon now? No, right? No, no. He should save it until the Black Rider's out and just kill them. Yeah, but he has also Haradrim archers here. They're gonna deal also a lot of damage. Okay, I don't know about this tainted land. I have saw and everything was used. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, panic. Yeah. The stage here will be taken down. Rallying goal will be used. Eagle special summon. I don't know about this. Buff Mock is being the target from the archers. Mrs. Mock is disengaging. He's trying to get back onto into uh, onto tainted land for the for the buff. 50% mm -hmm. increased damage and armor. Should be able to burst those eagles down now fast, right? Yeah, I don't like this. The eagle's gonna die and the black riders will come out right afterwards. And there's only one pike battalion. Actually, the eagles are still putting in so much work. Okay. They are not Target damage. the black riders immediately. <sighs> Oof, he's taking down everything with the eagles. Apart Continue, thank you for riders. the follow. Appreciate it. Okay, the black riders are joining the fights. Both eagles are still wow. remaining. They do nice so much trample. Damage. Oh my godness, they are so strong. 
Yeah, but this is the problem. They are all... I mean, they're gonna die, right? Yeah, yeah. they're all gonna die. He's okay. trying to get the maximum out of it, obviously. Level 2. Actually, he might be able to Can survive with them. Oh, just keep running. I want to use that. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> we would, it would be so nice if he would, you know, save one of these. He would have just, you know, he was for... I think if he would go back to the base like five seconds earlier. Yeah, maybe. And I'm pretty surprised that the Haradrum arches were actually not able to burst them fast mm -hmm. enough. In the meantime, the siege works, uh, the Lambermill, I mean, was destroyed. And once again, Imperialis has the upper hand, has a gigantic army in the middle of the map. It looks familiar. I think this is also going to take a bit now. Yeah. Uh, what is Moro going for? He has over 2,500 resources collected. Is he going for the Fell Beast? Well, he wants the Black Riders again. But can he make them? Should be able to. I mean... Uh, no. no. Now he can. Now he can. He has uh, not enough CP, but now he okay. is. It's going for them. But he's gonna lose the slaughterhouse and then he will be kept again. Now ah, he's losing many, many orcs, so he should be good. CP wise. Maybe he should have went for the uh, Felbis, actually. <laughs> I don't know, man. This, really? he, he could be doing something with the Screech. Uh, I mean, if you want fear, you just make catapults and throw some skulls. Yeah. And drama trolls, he didn't go for any other drum. He's going for it. I hope he's not gonna lose the siege works. Imagine the situation: the black riders are joining, and right when the pikemen are in front of the siege works, they're gonna take so much damage out of it. Yeah, this is a bad idea. Splitting off yeah. those pikes, they're gonna, never gonna kill anything here. Yeah. Gothmok is diving in though. And here come the black riders. Okay, all the pikes are gone. All the pikes are gone. He can now dive in. This is. Terrible. This is the dream. This is the dream for Mordor player. Oh my godness. He's smashing everything, guys. I on Haradrim lances will be taken down as well. Barricade. I don't know about this. This was too defensively. Um, he could have used it a bit more. And he was able to defend himself. Black Riders. The best uh, ultimate unit from any faction, right? There are no better units than this. Probably not. Nope. And everything from Imperialis has been taken down once again, boys. And now we're gonna take a look into the... Thank you so much for the follow, by the way, Jinzo1. Appreciate it. These are the power points from Moro. 600 command points. 14 power points collected by the Elven player Imperialis. And 870 command points. Okay, so I don't think Imperialist has more of a plan other than making pikes and mercwoods right now. Yeah. And that's not great against, like, riders and catapults. So, I think Smok is just going to rely on Imperialist making more of these mistakes. Yeah, he's going also now for some catapults. And the catapults, they're going to put fire on those ends anyway. They're going to take damage over time. Um, besides that, he should be getting maybe some more Haradrim archers. Potentially buying fire upgrade on them to boost their damage a bit. What do you think about that, Solas? Uh, sure, why not? Yes, already one, two, three, four battalions of those... Archers, they are getting buffed from the Drama Troll. Um, he has Black Riders on the fields. They are focusing on the map control. But Glorfindel is still someone you need to avoid fighting when he has the Blade of Purity active. I mean, Smok is just building up a huge army. But the, but the thing is that... What is going to happen with the 14 power points from Imperialist? Is he going to go for the Elven Woods when Mr. Smok is going to use the Tainted Land again? Mm, no. I think you want Flood. Imagine a Flood on that Mordor base right now. Yeah, it's gonna devastate everything. Black Riders also, are taking down. Oh, he can't, can't um, <laughs> really make any of these catapults oh, right now. What is he doing? He was... Oh, actually, actually not. They are not getting killed. No. Oh. They are not... Oh. He's wait. turning... Wow. <laughs> and Imperialist is now securing those pathways for himself by building those battle towers, guys. Um, and these Black Riders are now being level 2, that means they're gonna debuff the enemy units, which is pretty nice. And without the ants, because he has only archers pretty much, right? He can't do anything without the ants. They have already yeah. one ant now on the field, going for the second. And also one catapult. 
So it looks like a siege fight. Yeah, we're gonna see now a siege fight which should be won by the motor player because catapults are just so strong against ants with the fire. Mm -hmm. So... Honestly, I think Silverthorn is what he needs right now, so the Mirkwoods can help out against more of these units here. Yeah. But he he has actually upgrades uh, armor here, level 1. Okay. Look, this ends now, boys. Look, this end now. He's gonna start burning. And then End's he's not gonna move for like 25 seconds. That's what I hate about ants. <laughs> they are dancing around mm. forever, you know? There you go. Rip. Yeah, the ant is gone. That's why I hate them so much, also in Battle for Middle Earth 1. They are, for me, the worst siege weapons ever. <laughs> okay. I think Smog wants to go now. Yeah. And it seems reasonable. Two catapults, Black Riders have healed up. And a lot of Radrum Arches with Fire Arrow upgrades. Mm -hmm. They have also the buff now. The tower will be taken down easily from the catapults. Mirkwoods are now left alone in the outside. They're gonna be taken down in a second and a half. They are quite squishy units. Man, he yes. only has one pike, Three four Mirkwoods. Cloud break! Where is Kofmok mm -hmm. now with the iron hands? <laughs> right. I mean, not the best timing. He's focusing the Black Riders, but he has no rallying or anything. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, nice trample. Oh my godness. This is. Massacre. Massacre, and he can cover that. The, now the effect of Cloud Break is gone. Now what you gonna do? Eagles are on cooldown, Quega. Can't be special summons. Roar ability Another from the Drama Troll. Wow. Barricade was special summons. Moro is fishing so much power points. Look at the power points he has. The catapults are getting taken down by the Lancers, though. There is one left. Ooh, there was a black uh, barbed arrow shot on the Glorfindel. Will he be able to get away? Should be able to. Unbelievable. Okay, but Barrage ability will be picked from Mr. He Smog. He has given up. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god, guys. What a turnaround. What a mistakeful game, which actually ends up Mordo being the winner of this against elves on a map like Erich. <laughs> um, Should never win that. So, Mr. Smog is leading now again. 2-1. Crazy game. Fiesta game. <laughs> Okay, guys, now we need to get into the game number four. So far, it's quite even. Imperialist has to win this next one because if Mrs. Mock wins the next one, uh, it's going to be much more difficult to deal with the score um, because then Mrs. Mock only needs one more win. So we're going to edit the scoreboard real quick. I'm still surprised that Mrs. Mock actually ended up winning this one. Actually. <laughs> I was pretty sure after seeing the matchup that it's gonna be almost impossible. Okay, guys, so Mr. Smog was the winner. And again, Imperialist had much more bets. I'm really surprised about that. So I'm sorry, guys, you're gonna lose your points. Um, Imperialist on the one side and Mr. Smog on the other side. I'm pretty curious if Mr. Smog gonna pick random again. What do you think, Solas? Yeah, he's gonna stick through it. I mean, especially now after winning that game. There is actually no need to pick anything else. Okay, and the last thing what we need to do is we're gonna remove the map array. So we have only good maps left now. We have Forts of Eisen, Forts of Eisen 3, Jungles of Farharat, and Plains of Lindom left in the map pool. And the next map is gonna be Jungles of Farharat. Okay. Pretty nice. So the biggest map so far. No, actually not. We had already Eastfold and Westfold as well. Okay, um, Westworld. I mean, uh, jungles. Oh, really? Quega, my friend. Thank you for 11 months, only one month away from getting 12. That's crazy. Quega just resubscribed for 11 months. Ahoy, let's go beyond 53 Gandhi. Thank you so much for the, for the resub for 11 months in a row. Appreciate it. Okay. Um... You need to first of all choose the map. This guy doesn't know how to, you know, type in the keyboard. They have two of these now in the room. One of them is Imperialist, the other one is El Ruhir. Confirmed. 
Okay, Imperial is gonna pick goblins. Holy moly, what do you think about that, Solas? Hmm. I think his chances are better with elves, but we'll see. Okay. I think it's um, a map-based choice, right? Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, I mean, goblins, they can do good on the map jungles of Fararats, obviously, but... You know, he's kind of being in a rough situation. He was winning the first game with elves, the second game he lost, and he's now not feeling comfortable anymore to play with elves again, yeah. and now Mrs. Mock gets elves. The the luck in this finals, man. You yeah. just keep getting these matchups. Elves against goblins. This time they switched. The goblin player will be imperialist, and Mr. Smock is gonna be the white album player at the bottom side against the green goblin player at the top side. Map is Jungle South Farharat. This is the game number four, boys. 2 oh, two one for, for now for Mr. Smock. Okay, so. Is it gonna be a fissure start to creep the troll? I can't yes. tell. Yeah, he's gonna yes, go it first. is. So the factions we didn't see today once, guys, in the finals are dwarves, uh, men of the west, Isengard. Those three factions were unseen so far. Hmm. And I would like to see one dwarf game, actually. Yeah. You know, Mrs. Mock getting dwarves against elves or something. Could be nice to watch. Warchand and Rallying Cold start. Um, what do you think about this matchup? I mean, you, I know that elves are in favor right now, you know, in a, in a smaller map, but would you change, would you say that this fact changes in a map like Jungle of Farharat? It can change very easily if the goblin just gets a little bit of momentum, and that can easily happen with the build order he's going for. But he needs to execute it correctly, so let's keep an eye on that. Yeah. So far, he is doing it right. I, I think he's gonna try to creep off the trolls at the same time, right? I wouldn't like that. That's too greedy already. Uh, he's going with the builder to the bottom left side already. So I'm assuming what he's planning to do is get those pikes inside of it, creep this one, get them back into it, and then come out here and creep this one as well. Which can work. It's can actually, if this works, it's gonna boost your eco right like crazy. You get like what 800 resources from it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, he's gonna creep. I mean, um, it's out of question if it's gonna work. He will definitely creep both trolls if he wants to, but. The question is, does that give the elf too much time to react? Yeah, because he's creeping also now at the right side in the middle. And just getting now some more units. Pikes are also moving forward. I think he's smelling something like this. Or are they just going for the war creep? That's the question. No, no, that's just normal. Okay. So Warchand and Rallying Call is ready. I think early on they are just focusing, both of them are focusing on the creeps. There are plenty of them on the map jungles of Fararat. The first creep was secured for both the players. Obviously, troll is gonna give you more um, command, I mean, more treasure, and more power points. Look, mm -hmm. Imperialist was almost has almost one power points, uh, and because of the creeping here from Mr. Smog, that's gonna be his second creep. He has also one power point. Okay, a little interesting situation now. Smog has made the standard timed uh, stables. Which yeah. is bad against what uh, goblins are doing, right? Because they're useless against half trolls. Yeah. But Imperialisk is following this up with a goblin cave, not a spider pit, which is more usual. So yeah. the stables won't be totally useless. And Mrs. Mog was also able to scout that tunnel. He was trying to sneak at the bottom side. Mm -hmm. uh, but half trolls, what men are joining now? Two battalions, actually. They are mm -hmm. sometimes stuck in. He's gonna lose the tunnel anyway, I'm assuming. Warchan is still ready, remember? And he was able to secure the second troll creep for himself. That means we have only one more creep left, and that's gonna be the war here at the left side. Mm -hmm. Pikemen are just gonna die in a second. But yes, mm. archers in position. Don't go in, man. Don't go in. Yeah. He's gonna commit to that, regardless, I think. He's gonna use Warchan and go for it, yeah. Um, Imperialist is gonna use it, I mean, Mrs. Mock is gonna use it defensively, which is mm -hmm. the right call, obviously. Yeah. 
If he can take down two, two uh, Malon trees, can be good. No way. He will maybe be able to take one. Maybe. <laughs> because yeah, he's blocking that. nicely. Very nicely. He's putting the units, as you can see, chat, right in front of the Malon tree and denying Imperialists to reach out to them. Yeah, and here as the elf play, you just feel so good right now, yeah. because what's going to happen to you next? The goblin had his big chance right there, and that was not nearly enough. Nah, and he's going to just clean this bottom side now, take down those tunnels, and he has so many units now for, def for defense. He can even put some counter pressure with the mobility of those lancers, obviously. Uh, Spider Pit is coming up for Imperialist at the same time. He's obviously trying to get more half towards Swordsman. But losing them for free is gonna hurt you big time, much more than losing goblins. They are quite expensive units. The tunnel has been taken down. Doesn't look good for Imperialis, right? No, that's uh, the problem with creeping the second troll. Alright. Um, okay, so we're gonna see a fight around this area at the bottom left side, which might be a mistake, boys. Yeah, that's pretty good for goblins. Yeah. He's gonna win that fight. There is no cavalry spot, there is no spot at all. And he is trying to creep right now the goblin at the top left, at uh, top right. I was I was lying, there is still one creep left. <laughs> that's it. Tunnel will be taken down from the cavalry units. Like Keith pads were actually used. Yeah. Spider links are now on the field, which is good actually. They can do some good work against the uh, Revander Lancers. And they chase those archers down. So Abba is saying in the chat, Solas, are you going to call GG? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now we're gonna see Spider links, but it's a 2v1 situation. It can be bad for the Goblin player. It's gonna be bad for yeah. the Goblin player, obviously. Oh, half troll pikemen are joining now. And Imperialis is going for a counter pressure. I mean, he needs to do something now. He needs to take down some of those Malon trees. He needs to potentially take down those archers somehow without losing too many units by himself. And definitely yeah. not sacrifice your units without taking anything in return. But you know, as goblins, you need to attack from more than one angle yeah. at a time. This is just... This is the dream for elves. Like, yeah. okay, there's an attack, I send my stuff there and I defend it. And he's just sacrificing those half-troll swordmen as we are able to see. I mean, this map is actually not bad for the elves as well, because there are so many trees you can actually hide your units, right? Sure. Can also hide spiderlings though. Yeah. That's something he's not doing right now. Yeah, he's doing it now. He has two bat three battalions actually of those spiderlings around the trees. Glorfindel is on the field from the elven player, Mr. Smok. Uh, good timing. And I put so much work against the spiderlings here. Oh, and splash. oh my god, he was like literally killing with one strike five spiders at the same time. You don't want to be grouped against this guy. Should I call it GG now, Amber? <laughs> Almost 10 power points collected by Mr. Smog, so everything is looking great. He's gonna go for the enshrouding mist anyway. Um, and yeah. This is not looking very good for Imperialists. Maybe he should not have changed the plan and stick up with the elves. I mean, I'm grateful we don't watch an elf mirror on this yeah, map. Yeah, I'm also happy I'm about that, like. actually. <laughs> also happy about that. Oh, uh, uh, you was right, man. This half throws what, man? They are smashing the lancers. Come on. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alvin. No, no. Riding call and, and shrouding miss was used. Mm -hmm. He's gonna call it GG now, boys. That means we have a 3-1 situation for Mr. Smog from Ukraine. That again means he's only one win away from winning the finals and securing himself the $100 cash prize. Depends all on the next game. Either on the map Lanes of Linzon, Forts of Ice, or Forts of Ice and 3. Because those three maps are only left in the pool. Now is the time for Mr. Smog to shine. He was waiting for the finals. I, what I, why am I hosting? All week long. Mr. Smog was always actively playing his games, by the way. One Not of the few guys him. that was asking me if they, if, they wanna, if they can play. You know, all the other guys I was asking all the time. Can you play tomorrow? Can you do that? 
So Mr. Smog was definitely always around, always ready to play. Besides that one time when he was winning a tournament game and Solas wanted to play and he didn't want to. Uh, this time we had so many bets on Mr. Smog actually, okay. Um, let's open possibly the last contest. If Mr. Smog wins that, the Christmas tournament will be finished. Who will win the next game? Imperialist on the one side against Mr. Smog. Alright, boys. There you go. I think everything is still possible. We have seen many, many great comebacks in this tournament so far. And it's not like the end of the world because Imperialist, you know, it's a 3-1 three, three right, right now, right? Yeah, 3-1. Why mm -hmm. I have 3-2 in my scoreboard, which is a mistake. Um, Imperialist won only one game against Mr. Smog so far. Yeah, I was wrong with the thing. Okay. Okay, boys. Um, uh, we forgot something. We need to spin the wheel, right? Sorry for that. Okay, we need to now remove the map, Jungles of Fararat. Like mentioned before, we will have only Forts of Eisen, Forts of Eisen 3 and for Planes of Lindon left. And the next game will be played on the map, Forts of Eisen 3. Yes. Big map. Let's see if Imperial is gonna stick up with the Goblins again. Or if he's gonna go for Elves, if he's potentially gonna go random, we know Mr. Smog is gonna pick random. So I really hope to see something else right now. So I want to see men, I want to see Isengard, I, I want to see dwarves, those three factions we were not able to see just yet. And Imperial is gonna pick Isengard now. Hmm. So he's like trying to beat Mrs. Mock in every single possible faction. Is Isengard the right call? Enzi, welcome to the stream. Skalage, welcome. Wall Steve, welcome. MQS, dude, welcome to the stream. How do you, how are you doing, MQS? 94 viewers, guys. Poke Jam, pretty nice. Thank you for tuning in. Ossi Hafner, welcome to the stream as well. Okay. Favorite matchup to see now. What else? Uh, goblins again. I like that. Okay, Isengard against Goblins. Or Dwarves, maybe. I would be more about dwarves against Isengard. So, you know, classic good against evil. Mm -hmm. Imperialist shall win this time. Since my birthday is coming, really? Can Spence buying some presents for me? You need to let us know when you have the birthday so we can celebrate. Goblins. Oh, nice. Isengard against Goblins. So, Les, what do you think about this matchup? Would you say this is a really quite balanced matchup, so the better player wins, or would you favor one of those two factions in the 1v1 on this map? I think it's one of the most balanced, yeah. But, um, well, first of all, map size plays a role. Of course, favors Goblins, but um, also Spiderlings can throw off an unexperienced Isengard player. So I'm curious if Smok is going to do that. And we will have a visual start from Mr. Smok on the right side. Okay. Isengard player starting with the Uruk pit on the left side, Imperialist. Playing the Isengard, he was picking the factions. He was always picking the faction in this tournament so far besides the game number one. He didn't pick, he got Mordo and right after getting the Mordo he was like, okay, I'm not gonna risk the biscuit anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna always pick. He was two times Elves, one time um, Goblins and one time now Isengard. So, Fissure Start is very unusual against Isengard for obvious reasons because Isengard's basic units are pretty much almost able to beat half troll swordsmen, right? So yeah. you have to execute it really well. You need to abuse the fact that, you know, the surprise factor and that stuff. Exactly. And I agree with Hisoka in the chat. Goblins are the faction of Christmas time, apparently. 100% agreed and confirmed. This is ridiculous, actually, how many times we had goblins in this tournament. It was not even funny. I think like eight games out of 10. We had goblins involved. 
We had so last this time we had so many people picking the goblin infection. It was crazy. Hmm. I mean, we had besides that, you know, in compare the goblins against elves, there were much more people picking the goblins than elves. Besides that, yeah. I think many many people were always picking random. So okay. smoke is creeping at the bottom left side. Yeah, yeah of course. And uh, luckily for Imperialist, at least I think that's good for him. He's made his fourth furnace at the fort, so he's gonna spot anything coming in. Yeah, like he's this also, builder. Yeah, he's also being able now to scout the half troll pikeman. He's trying to be around to steal the trash. I can, I can smell it. <laughs> Let's see if he can go it. I, I would go. I would risk the biscuit for it. Oh my god, I'm gonna focus on that guy. Go for it. Go take the trash. Oh no. <laughs> he's gonna get one. He's gonna get. Yeah, one. he's gonna get one. Worth that's it. Great. I mean, it's not worth it if you lose the builder. <laughs> But he got almost 100. Oh my, what is he doing with the Urukai? He was ah, running into the troll. Ah, it's still okay. I mean, I think he was, but, you know, all of his senses were at the treasure, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's a pretty good start for Eisen. You know what's up. You get one fourth of the treasure. And, yeah. I mean, although I think the one thing he didn't pay attention to is that forward tunnel. Yeah, at the bottom left side there. Uh, that can put a lot of pressure. He has half troll swordsman and half troll pikeman inside of it. He's trying to put some counter pressure with the Urukai. Remember, Warchant is ready for both the players. Goblin Cave is up on the field for the Goblin player, Mr. Smog. And we're gonna see a 1v1 situation half throw Swordman against Urukai. I don't think we will. Ah, they're gonna just disengage. I mean, in a 1v1, I think Urukai, they're gonna win. Mm -hmm. Still, with the Shield Ball, level 1 at least. I mean, it's there are not also worth much it for more the units. Goblins. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he doesn't want to give up the tunnel. Gonna use those okay. units for defensive purposes. Um, which again, now he will be sp spotting now the tunnel, which is yeah. really nice. That's great. And he has crossbowmen also, just in case those units, they're gonna try to come out of this. Uh, crossbowmen, they're gonna deal a lot of damage. Is he gonna try? Is he gonna still try it? I hope not. It's gonna be a mess. Crossbowmen, they're gonna deal... Oh, but mm -hmm. he has four units inside of it. Okay, but... Okay. War chance. Use war chance. He can't get out. <laughs> oh, they are being. Imagine a Eowyn spear there. <laughs> spear there. Or, you know, Glorfindel striking one time with Bleed of Purity. This is pretty bad for Smok, I think. I mean, I don't know how many units are there. <laughs> now I see. I mean, he has still many, many units around. I mean, you gotta blame Imperialist. I mean, just send everything there. Where yeah. else would he come from? Uh, he's doing it now. He has three battalions of crossbow, man. He missed one of them with the war champ, which is a big field spam, man. And Corsars, mm -hmm. he's trying to go for the furnaces. There is no reason of you trying to fight that out. You can't win that fight against that many crossbow men shooting at you. Uh, but on the other side, he should be at least able to take down one of the furnaces. If an Isengard is moving forward with the Urukai to place those Urukai right in front of the second one, which is smart. Yeah. He's not handling this well. I think he should have moved two of the crossbows right away to protect yeah. the furnaces. And if you lose the second one, I think it's gonna be not bad for Mr. Smok. The rallying, the Warchan buff is gone though. Mm -hmm. Corsairs, they will be taken down. Half Troll Swordmen are still strong, aggressive stands, maximizing the damage output. The, the Furnace will be taken down as well. Two Furnaces down. They're using the Bombard ability to shoot over the structure <laughs> on the nice. Goblins. Hmm. So, oh, and also, Imperialist was never able to finish the War Glare in the north. Oh, really? Oh, no. Come on. It's rebuilding over time now, unfortunately. Um, when would you go for Lourdes now? You know, like now or maybe like two more minutes. I think Lourdes is going to be great here, right? You need to... No, no. Here you need to wait a long time, I think. Okay, so um, you, you want to keep up the keep up the unit spam. Mm-hmm. And also what I really don't like about Smog's play here is that he also follows up with the Goblin Cave. Imagine if he went for two Spider Riders or so behind this. Um, Eisen barely has any pikes, his crossbows are always unprotected. The Goblins are not going to add a whole lot to this army, I feel. He's upgrading that Fisher to level 2 Goblins, I take 14th part of the Tressa, <laughs> like, like in the <laughs> Hobbit movie. <laughs> you guys are crazy, how do you think about that stuff? Okay. Um, he has Cribine for the next fights and Cave Pet, so it's pretty equal right now in terms of buff and debuff. Uh oh. Crossbow's in trouble. Yeah. He needs to use the bats, oh, but it's still a bad fight to take in melee range. Those yeah. half throw swordmen, they're gonna smash you. 
Hmm. Keep moving. I mean, he has only crossbow, man. That's it. He doesn't have any Urukai or, you know. What do you think about Berserkers in this matchup? Um, would they do anything yeah, actually, against Aftral Sword, man? Yeah, I think here they would be pretty good, actually. But um, it's a tournament game. You don't make those crazy experiments here. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to take a look into the current power points and command points, Isengard play Imperialist has 575 command points chat. Three power points collected after the bats and the war chants. Um, Smok is being a bit behind in terms of power points. One and a half power points collected. Yeah. He's and certainly going to lose the in spot now. I think yeah. Isengard is going to conquer that. And But we're going to get some cave trolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the second best thing to spider riders, I guess. Tunnel has been taken down. Really nice done here. Try to save the level 2 Uruk Urukai, maybe. I don't know what he's doing with the crossbow, man. He has so many of them, but not using them. He can yeah. literally take down everything here with four of them. No idea. Nice, Urukai are gonna be in position to protect them. Warchant will be used. Hmm. Uh, is there a tunnel to escape? No, there is a tunnel actually. Yeah. And if he can escape now, he will have the Warchant's advantage. I think Smok really would like to fight here, but unfortunately he doesn't have a Cave Troll yet, so... Yeah. Cave Troll is on the field though now, running through the middle. He's gonna go Man. for the second one. He's gotta get out of here. Yeah, he's losing many goblins here for no reason. He was able to escape. Uh, like you said, the inn will be now captured by the Isengard player. That's gonna give him the option to get some black orcs. If he wants to. They are quite strong actually, right? And they cost a bit less than the Urukai. So potentially mm -hmm. not a bad choice. We have still many creeps left. Those signal fires in the, in the middle of the map, by the way guys, are uncaptured still. Cave Troll going ham now. Yeah. And I think if he pays good attention to that, it's going to do a lot. Yeah. But would you pick a goblin? To and throw it? Yeah. Try to fight? No. All right. No, no. No gimmicks here. I mean, it could work, but. I mean, he's so strong against structures. Look how much damage he's dealing. That's crazy, actually. And so super fast, so there is no way of you catching him with infantry mm. units. Creep secured so, by Mr. Smok. Actually, if you see a cave troll like that, as Eisen, you have to assume there will be more because they're pretty good at harassment. And the best choice against that is actually Sharku because he can hunt him. Yeah, that's true. They are, he's going to be able to outrun them, catch them, and kill them. Mm -hmm. And this crossbow man. Oh. I mean, you have so many different options with those cave trolls you can you know keep a distance oh wait we're gonna have a fight around this area i don't know about this bats from mr smog he also used tainted land and doesn't really work out for him no but imagine the troll going there and smashing one time oh yes, my god oh, there's some pikes though oh you don't want to run into it no oh, oh my god it's oh, unlucky wow. if you would <laughs> oh nice it's still <laughs> I think like if he would survive two more seconds and if he would get a great hit off there, he would be killing like all the crossbow men with one strike. Yeah, can't blame him for trying. Yeah. The Vestation was already used from Isengard player. Nice. And I'm assuming he's gonna go for a hero now. He has 1700 resources collected. So you yeah, said definitely. Sharku would be the best choice. Yes. Here. Also because there's no spider riders. Yeah. He's just countering everything on the map right now. Let's see if he's gonna go for it. He has over 2000. Is he trying to go for Saruman or what? Please don't. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna be happy about it because Saruman, <laughs> we didn't see him, but it's not gonna... Oh, he's using the money for... Uh, he's going for Sharku. He's okay. going for Sharku or maybe for Lourdes. Um, how much Sharku costs? Lourdes costs 1,400, right? Mm -hmm, and Sharku 1,200. And I think he's going for Lourdes in this case. <laughs> he's making two arrow towers, which yeah. I hate. I hate that. Lourdes is there. Yeah, I, was, I, I knew it. He's gonna go for Lourdes. It's kind of a waste of money. You know, you, you, there's absolutely no reason of you doing that. Because, mm -hmm. this, I mean, the Uruk pits... Look, the towers are not doing anything. They are not even protecting yeah. anything. The Swerdices are still getting destroyed. Lourdes was able to hit level 2. Quite strong against the Spider Riders, though. And will be good against... Mm -hmm. uh, 
Goblin Army with the, late, uh, with the leadership level 5. Yeah, that can be negated with the cave pads, but still, you know, it's not gonna be permanently active, obviously. We have two cave trolls in the south taking out the inn. Yeah, destroying it, though, no? Yeah, like, yeah. When I can't have it, you can't have it as well. <laughs> they can't capture that, right? They don't have hands to capture. I mean, they have hands, but they don't know how to use them. Yep. Um, okay, power point wise. Fight here. Okay, we're gonna see a fight. Warchan was used from both the players. Cave pads are on cooldown. It's a bad fight to take for the Isengard player. Very bad uh, fight. He kills a lot of spider riders again. Smog yeah. is really not good at using this. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna lose to Italian, but he's gonna lose the fight, obviously. Uh, where is Lourdes? Is Lourdes is diving. I think he is, right? There are still so many half throws Swordman. Yes, but it's still a nice value for him. I wouldn't mm -hmm. mind this fight as I honest. Trolls are tr trying to pressure the map, but he needs to be careful here with the troll. Level 3, running for his life, should be able to get in safety. And I think you are so absolutely right. When Shark would be on the field, they would not be able to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And at this point, oh, yeah. White Man of Dunland special summon. And they do so much work, those trolls. They are everywhere, yeah. you know? Oh, he's kidding. gonna go for the crossbows. Oh, he's going for it. And there is no protection. Crossbowmen are not bursting him down fast enough. Lourdes, I don't know about that. Why would you not just shoot at him? And this is... What? Oh my god, he's bugging. <laughs> oh, can't he just bugs or what? I yeah, think I he pressed it too fast or yeah. something. It also happens on, in Battle for, Mid Battle for Middle Earth 1, by the way. I hate it when this happens. Good to know. Well, we have Sharku at least, so none of the Cave Trolls and Spider Riders will achieve a whole lot. Yeah. Sharku, Lourdes. And Lourdes is uh, almost level 4. And there is no hero from the go uh, Goblin Clan. If there is gonna be a hero... I think, no, he, there, here's Azok, right? Yeah, Azok is yep. here. I didn't see him. So Azok against Cave Lourdes. Troll. Lourdes should be able to win, right? With the, with the Carnage. Cave Troll dead. Oh, nice. Level 3. Nice one in the middle, Sharku, ping off. Does he have more cave trolls? He has a great map control still. He has like 825 command points against yeah. 500, you know? That's the map kicking in, it's so big. Yeah. I mean, maybe some warp riders to pressure the map a bit. What do you think? Mm, now with Sharku, probably yes, good idea. Oh, Lurtz is in trouble, I think. Yeah. Don't no, fight them on the Tainted Land. Thank you for the follow. This Herr Zakov. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Lourdes is running for his life. Hmm. We'll get in safety. Really close for the leadership. Which is gonna be nice. Sharku is pressuring the map by taking down the tunnels. Oh, great attack by Imperialist with the Wildman Summon. Does oh, he have nice. a Warchant? Yes, he yes. does. Okay, he needs to react to that fast. He's gonna lose this level 3 tunnel. Gotta kill the Goblin King is joining the fights. Cave pads will be used for defensive purposes. But the level 3 tunnel will be taken down. If he can take down two more tunnels, I think it's gonna be really nice. Especially mm -hmm. those level 3. Is Mrs. Mock gonna use the... Oh, Scavenger pick from Mrs. Mock actually now. What do you think about the scavenger choice as a power point? I think he knows that if he wins this game, it's gonna be a long game, so for that scavenger is always a good choice. Oh look who's here, Anubis is here. Anubis my friend, long time no see. Welcome to the stream. Oh wow. Uh half troll swordsman charge and two crossbows at the river with Azuk. Oh. I missed that one. Yeah. He has to respond with uh, the Lurtz army because he needs to cripple Azog. Yeah. The the scary thing is if the goblin can unite, you know, Gorkal and Azog in one army, then it gets pretty scary for Eisen. Yeah. But the problem is, wait a second, where is Lurtz? Lurtz is in the middle, at the right side. He doesn't yeah. even have to cripple yet. Oh, Sharku, oh my god, Warchan was used, Devastation was used from the Isengard player. Sharku has to run for his life. Um. This little group of army will deal a lot of damage. Warg Pit yeah. is level to imagine him taking down the Warg Pit without the Warks are coming out of the pit. And he will be able to do that. 
I mean, he doesn't even try to defend. I mean, doesn't have much. Yeah. Gives it up. But in the meantime, he, I think Imperialis is also... No, wait. That's a bad fight. Yeah, it's a bad fight. Nice response here from response. Uh, I think um, Azok might be in trouble. Sharku is quite low though. I hope Azok not gonna be able to kill him. He's running it down, taking way too much Very damage. Too much oh, of He's not course. paying attention. Gurkle is dead. Yeah, nice. level 5 now, which is nice, but Lurt's gonna die probably, right? Oh, never nope. mind. Palantir will be used for the, for the, for <laughs> nice. the movement sweep buff. Nice one. Totally worth it. Yeah. Imagine they are running into... I mean, imagine now he's gonna oh. cripple. Cripple. He can cripple. <laughs> Go for Perfect. it. Do it. Imperialist. I know you are stream sniping. Go for it, dude. <laughs> So close. Cripple him. Do it. He's gonna go for yes. it. Yes. Nice. Um, Both nice. heroes down from. Oh, that's pretty nice, man. Very well done here from Imperialist. Also, nice move here with the vision of balance. If you didn't know, guys, 15% increased movement speed you are able to gain from that. That's why wow, Lutz was outrunning those half towards Wartman. This game just turned on its head from these two moves right there. Yeah. Like, it was just looking so good for Smok. Now he lost both heroes. But, uh, but Smok is going for another attack with those half towards Wartman. Yeah. He was again able to sneak a tunnel um, at the top left side. In the middle, I mean. But the fortress is gonna be protected with those towers. He might be losing those... This level 2 furnaces. Tainted line is being from the goblin player, by the way. They are being buffed. But actually, those towers are coming in handy now. They gonna put yeah. in some nice work. Eventually. He's gonna go for even one more. Work pit is gonna get upgraded to level 2. And every time he's killing those Urukai, we can see this plus 5, plus 5. This is from the Scavenger ability. Lourdes is arriving. He has the leadership, giving 33% increased damage and armor for the crossbow man. And I think he's gonna be very, very important once you are getting him level 8. That's gonna be the time to shine with the pillage ability, which is pretty much like Scavenger, right? Mm-hmm. 800 power point, uh, command points for the Isengard player and 825 command points for Mr. Smog. Wildsman of Dunland is going to be ready. Warchan as well. On the other side, uh, 12 and a half power points collected after having industry. He's going for industry now. We'll be using it on the level 2 um, furnace. And I think Isengard can't really run out of resources. Imagine his next ability can, might also be field of fires, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's oh. getting stronger. Oh. Okay, well, Work riders now. There is no defense to them. All what abilities trample. Good timing. Gonna find the industry. Oh, he, he was can't be... defend it though. He can't defend it. Oh, nice, nice Krebine. Work. Uh, I don't know about the vision of balance here. Does it do anything there? That's the question. Maybe so that the warp riders can get out of the units faster yeah. because they're stuck. And kind of waste summon here from Mr. Smog big time. The Wildmans, they are gonna be taken down, including the Warchants. Charku is arriving level 5, and he will be able to keep this level 2 furnace with the industry buff on it safe. And, and at the same time, the Urukai in the Goblin base killed a level 2 tunnel. Oh, that's pretty nice. Azok back on the field, as well as Kor kills the Goblin King. Spider ally is gonna be ready for from Mr. Smog, another special summon. Hmm. Um, while Isengard player is actually choosing oh. the industry. Oh, wait, he's gonna commit he to that. It. He wants it, but is it enough? Uh, yeah, it is enough. Uh, they're gonna deal a lot of damage, I think. I uh, looked the damage out, but that's crazy. Uh, I mean, that's good, but he also just had to pick that power for this, so... Yeah, and he lost what? He lost the Wildman, Warchan, and the Spiders were one. I mean, it's technically not only one Furnace because of the buff, but mm -hmm. I mean, Isengard still being in a safe spot. Uh, he, he didn't go for any Lumber Mills just yet, which is something what Mr. Smog definitely does. So he has one Lumber Mill as far as I can see. And on top of that, the Vestation is going to be ready soon, so he can still boost his eco. Um, what would you do as the Isengard player right now, you know, to win the all-out fights? Would you go any time soon for a Saruman, Solas? No. Um, the thing that I've just noticed about this matchup on this map is both players rely on elite units, right? A lot of Uruks, a lot of half trolls, and they never really do critical damage to each other because they just can always expand on another side, they can always recover because it's so big and because there's not a lot of units. 
So I think both players need to increase their spam a little bit. And yeah, Smog just lost the Builder, by the way, at the top right. The tower will be also taken down, which is good for the Isengard player. But like you said, Vision of Palante was used. Oh, Lurtz. Oh, oh Lurtz he is lost. going down, plus 157. And what is Lurtz doing there? It's alone, you know, yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. Why the players are, you know, like, okay, I have a lead, let me throw a bit. <laughs> Yeah, I feel exactly. like, you know, it's crazy. Um, also, one painful lesson I've learned from this matchup as Isengard, and it sounds a bit lame, but I think what you have to do, especially on a big map, is make lumber mills and wall them in as Isengard, because if you spread yourself thin on the map, you give the goblin endless chances to harass you. Yeah. Oh, nice trample here. I mean... This game, I don't know, I think it's pretty even right now, um, but, oh, the builder from Isengard player might be in trouble, he's gonna be taken down, plus you get so much from it, 88, man, that's crazy. Um, I think, in an all-out fight, the goblins have the upper hand, because he has two summons and Isengard has none, you know, uh, he has one. He's going for the field of fires, another uh, eco power point ability. Seems now, like he had enough you know, snowball situations right now. He's really able to press the goblin, the heart of the goblin base now. Yeah, exactly. He's winning now all the fights around the, around the map and uh, making sure to kill those tunnels at the bottom side as well as at the top side. The work sentry is putting in some nice work as well, as we are able to see. Oh, dead builder? Yeah. Oh, call kill? Never mind, he's level 4 now. Has the leadership, has the double buff with the totem plus the leadership. I mean, the eco from Isengard gonna be crazy now, guys. With industry plus devastation plus the field of fires on the slumber mills, you get 70% boost on the, on the resource income, which is pretty damn good. Uh, but he has Azok and Gorkil on the field. He's being surrounded. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't see a coming back from this situation. There are just too many crossbow men. They are being buffed from the war chant, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. And is Lurt still dead? Yeah. Unless we have a Drogoth coming right now, I think this is over. Do you see that? That uh, half was Swatman at the hill. <laughs> Do you see that? No. At the left side, you know, where the trees are, uh, at, the, at the side from the gob goblin player. They are uh, on top of the oh. hill. Yeah. Holy, how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Shilop is there. Let's see what she will be able to do. I mean, she is really annoying for Aizen. Yeah, maybe with Lourdes being around and crippling her down, uh, you know, and I I don't know if Lourdes will be able to burst her down because she has literally 5,000 health with level 1, so quite tanky, but still, when you cripple her down, she won't be able to move at least. Well, this reminds me of the Black Rider game, <laughs> Yeah. but she up now. Oh, webbing. Thank you so much for the follow, by the way, Bisa, appreciate it. Chad is having fun with the gambling. <laughs> they are gambling about points, you know. Don't care about the game like Isengard against goblins. Okay, so Smok has two tunnels. And he has three heroes. I mean, that's something. Yeah. But Isengard has industry, devastation, fuel of fires. And he's starting to make wildmen now. That's very good. Yeah. Chunk, thank you so much for the followers. For one, appreciate it. And there's the cripple. Yeah. I think he will be able to take it. But uh, there is a burst at this wall and extra burst, yeah. so she's gonna go down. Carnage will be used. Let's see the damage. Really? Yeah. I mean, did she's quite tanky, man. She's quite tanky. Did you know that she can uh, tunnel out of cripple strike? Yeah, I know that. I mean, I've seen that. Or I think it was a game from you when I was casting it from the game replays for YouTube, you know? Yes. Uh, you was crippled at the top side and then you, you know, used the thing at the bottom side, <laughs> so... <laughs> that's quite funny. And you can also go over the water with her, so... Mm -hmm. She's quite... Mobile Euro, uh, hero. And very tanky. I mean, Smoke okay. is trying to go back, to get back into the game, 16 power points collected. I, I think he's going for the dragon. Worm, um, maybe? He was just buying a hero for 2,500. Yeah, he revived Shilob, I think. Yeah. There's the worm. 
And Spiderling Summon, I mean, he can get stuff done. Ooh, nice summon. Oh, he can actually put in some nice work here. The Worm is gonna kill so much. I mean, all the structures on the other side are level 3. I mean, this work Pit and this Clan Seeding, for, uh, for sure. Quite tanky. Hard to take down. Lutz could look for a cripple opportunity here on the Azok or on the Gokil. Yes, it's available. And Imperial is once again liking the game on the map array, you know, giving just too much unnecessary time to Mr. Smog and just watching him destroying his structures. Um, There's a lot of stuff going on right now. He's losing everywhere. Yeah. I mean, Smok is actually striking back. 10 power points collected by the Isengard play, 8 power points collected, 700 command points against 750. Indeed, Smok was actually able to recover, and Shilop is gonna be back on the field soon, guys. We have still the spider creep at the right side of the river, by the way, all game long, and this is one of the longer games in the tournament, for sure. Yeah, this is already a pretty good example. I think you should just make a big wall around your lumber mills and be done with it. Yeah, or what's, what he also should be doing and what he has definitely the resources for are, are keep towers, you know? Make, make some yeah, towers. Of course. I mean, you can make like two of them close to each other and they're gonna protect each other and the goblins, they're not gonna be able to do much anymore. You can create so much pressure with those towers in the late scheme against the spam faction because he keeps getting the map control back and then he keeps losing it so it's like you know tom and jerry or never ending star yeah. love story and so far he was not able to deal any major damage to the side of mr smock yeah but you can see on the minimap right now that the little timing smock has with the worm the spiderling summon the wildman summon now it's all gone yeah. and now imperialist will like swap back into the map again like ebb and flow on the ocean, kind of. Yeah, but I think he needs to hurry a bit, you know? You yeah. don't want to leave too much time again. Because Smoke is not being that that far behind, if you take a look into the command points and stuff, and power points. Hmm, yeah, he has another scary attack coming. Yeah. I mean, he's making sure to get a really great resource income. Look at all those lumber mills at the bottom left side and stuff, you know, they are... He's making more of these, but maybe he should be going for upgrades, get heavy armor, forge plates, and try to win those fights really hard and try to pressure the fortress, because the fortress is protectless. I mean, he has, like, what, those, you know, uh, expansions which you can get the units from. Pretty right. much, right? Gorkil in trouble. Yeah. What is Lutz doing, actually? He was using Carnage and trying to catch or chase down those half those Wardmen instead of killing Gorkil. I mean, I mean Gorkil is dead anyway. Works. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Watcher. Ooh. Nice hits nice here from Lutz. Watcher is gonna be ready. Will it be necessary? That's the big question. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. But what do you need the Watcher right But now? he's gonna lose Lutz again. Mm. Level 8 Lutz just got killed from Azok. Azok level 7 now. He's mistakes. Yeah. But on the other side, Gorkil is down and I'm assuming there is no way of Azok getting away as well. The War Riders want to kinda catch him. Chasing yeah. down, battle rage is on cooldown, obviously. But this watcher really confuses me. He already has five additional points. So if he makes five more, he could have dragon. Yeah. And what is he going to use the watcher on? Like, more half trolls? That's not worth it. I mean, that's like the overkill, like we have seen when he was winning with the Alps, you know? Yeah. So it's, you know, you remember the time when he was using like flutes plus eagles plus ants plus everything to kill an undefended, undefended fortress. He's just trying to secure the win for himself and maybe thinking about the next possible fights he might take advantage of by using the Watcher. There goes Shilob again. Gets a lot of easy kills. Yeah. He's level 3. I've never seen her level 7 Poison Singer. How much damage does it actually deal to heroes? A lot? Oh, honestly, I can't tell you. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while. Okay, but, but it's something like the cripple ability from Lords, right? So it cripples the enemy unit hero. That means the enemy hero won't be able to move away. Uh, yes, and it also deals a lot of damage over it. <laughs> Finish this game already. I wish I, I wish I could, my friends. I wish I could. Right. 
What is the difference between pirate coins and coins? Uh, nothing. They are just called co pirate coins in this channel. <laughs> there are no items in this store, my friends. I don't know what I need to sell to you, Anubis. I don't have anything to sell. Oh, okay. watch out. Well. Nice one. Oh, but he was killing more of his own units <laughs> than from the enemy. <laughs> Oh, oh, but, oh my god, Shilop is taking, you know, she's doing so much damage to the Watcher, actually. But, oh, she's getting knocked down all the time, knocked up, actually. Wow. Oh, Shilop. Where is Sam? Why is Gamgee when we need them? Look this. <laughs> she's flying. Like, like a ping ball, you know. Okay, he's, the, the Watcher is gone. Um, but I think the time is not gonna favor the Isengard's player indeed. Look, the power points from Mr. Smoke is 21. Yep. Um, and the spider is gonna be ready soon. The Wildman was used for here around this area from Mr. Smoke. And he's just gaining more and more power points. He's still being in a safe spot, guys. I mean, he has still 800 command points because of those highly leveled tunnel. One tunnel I see only level 3, though. But here's a level 3 Lumber Mill. Gaining decent amount of resources. Has the scavenger ability, remember, right? That's also helping him out a lot. Yeah. What I really like, um, Imperialist has adjusted his production to his income. He has a lot of Uruk pits. Yeah. He has two Warg pits, two clan settings. Might seem like a lot, but you can totally afford all of that with Fuel of Fires. Yes, actually, four, five Uruk pits, man. <laughs> five Uruk pits, that's crazy. Yeah. And he's going now for the Armory. And yeah, Siege Works. Now he's doing everything at the same time. He has at least two towers here. That's what, I, what we were talking about. But they're going to mm -hmm. be taken down now, probably. No, uh, one of I them. I don't think so. No, actually not. Quite strong. Yeah, Azok was able to take down one. But now Great Battle Rage on or the Builder from Isengard player. I mean, it's not a, it's not the end of the world if you end up losing the. He's getting trampled down from from the shield up. Um, it's not the end of the world for the Isengard player oh. to lose a builder right now. Oh, he got happening? Azuk. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's dragon? bad. That's bad. Oh my goodness, the shield up is hitting like a truck. Oh, the summon dragon, dragon here, from yeah. Mrs. Smock. Nice move here, clearing, clearing the armory, delaying the upgrades. Mm -hmm. But. Like you said before, I mean, he has five Uruk pits. You can't kill all of them, you know? He has a lot of work. Yeah, yeah Smoke's command points 800 because of the Fortress expansions. Yeah. Chandov, mm -hmm. yeah. you're right. They are also, you know, increasing the command points by 75, actually, which is crazy, right? I mean, he has two. 75? Yeah, I was just reading it. Okay. So he has four of them. So he's literally getting 300 command points from it. Clan seedings are getting destroyed. No, Ling Summon is also here. Yeah. But um, I can't believe. I mean, you know, Imperialist is doing putting in some nice work. So I don't want to, you know, trash talk about him. But I think he's really, um, how can I say, under big pressure because he can't execute and he can't snowball the leads. Well enough. Yeah. He has a lead yeah. now. This game looks like free to me, like the last 20 minutes. But he's not able to close it, to, to go for the all-out fight. And one of the major mistakes, I think, was definitely the Watcher. Because you could have get the Dragon. And yeah. literally take down those structures for free. The Spider, Pit, Goblins, and the Fissure level 2. Kill the expansions and put Mr. Smock in a really rough situation. And force him to play with 200 command points. I mean, he has still to win uh, this game in his pocket, so I, I think he has still the advantage. But, you know, he, he, look at this. He's just rebuilding everything again, going for the armory and stuff. And most of his Uruk's pits are standing still. Yeah. So his marker could be better. And he's not making more units here. On the other side, he has... Oh, now he's going for attack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Wildman of Dunland special summon, he's focusing down the level 2 fissure, which is nice. He will be able mm -hmm. to take it down. If he can take down the level 3 tunnel, that's gonna be totally worth. Warchan was used defensively from Mr. Smok. That Berserker is actually working very nicely here. Yeah. 
Didn't he go for the Lourdes? Lourdes is actually in the base now, being level 8. Has the pillage ability unlocked? Isengard doesn't really need that resource income anymore at this stage. Oh, and he has the... Dragon Strike. Dragon Fire or Strike, yeah. Okay. Eh, I don't know about that. Mm. Yeah, actually not bad. You know, could be worse. He kills many, many stuff, including the level 3 tunnel, but... I would like to see that as an opening for a big fight, you know? I, I would like yeah. to see if you have a big army, you are in front and you are just using it to kill all the expansions and make the clean up the fortress and then you get, just kill the fortress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It would be a better choice. And he has the resources to do that. Um, upgrading the armory to level 2, going for another Uruk pits. He has many of these, but he's not making any units from them right now, from those two in the back at least. But obviously at this stage of the game, players might be exhausted, you know? It's a super long game. That's game number five, literally. There's a question. How would Deathbringers do versus Goblins? Um, oh, they do okay, yeah. Um, can definitely mix them in. I mean, they are strong regardless, I think, against which kind of action. Uh, obviously, they cost like 1,000 each, but you need to upgrade that to level 3 first. Yeah, I mean, the biggest weakness is elite archers. Goblins don't have those, so... Okay, I don't know about this. Wildman of Dunlands from Mr. Smog for defensive purposes. Um, now he's moving forwards. Lourdes is coming with them. And, yeah, that should be it. But the Watcher from Mr. Smog are never ready. <laughs> That's gonna delay again, okay. guys. The Watcher from Mr. Smog is going to be ready. I mean, Imperialist has messed up quite a bit this finals, but I don't think Smog can come back from nah, this. Nah, he can't come back from this one. I mean, after this game, if everything goes alright, nice watcher special summon again, and the score will be 3-2, still in favor of Mr. Smog, and we will jump into the game number 6. If Imperialist manages to win the next game, we're gonna jump into the last game, the game number 7. So after this one, we have two more options for the map it's gonna be either planes of Lindon or Forts of Eisen num number one you know the normal Forts of Eisen okay I think that should be it now right I don't see a I mean he has nothing left he's not calling it GG I think he's yeah, just some... trying to play around with uh, Imperialist a bit making him nervous uh, sometimes Smog just wants to see his fortress die yeah I don't know why I mean he's fighting until the end which is Maybe he's hoping for some shenanigans, you know. Maybe Imperial is losing connection. Oh, Lourdes has been taken down. I mean, he has like one, literally Azok and one half troll spearman. That's it. But because of those kind of stuff, right, he has still so much command points. I mean, he has two yeah. tunnels at the top side. But that's actually quite smart. I've never seen that before, that people are doing that to boost the command points. Really? Yeah. It's pretty common, I think. I mean, they give so much also, you know? They give 75. Yeah, I should probably reduce that, to yeah. be honest, to 50. Because a normal one gives you, what, 50? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's quite crazy. Oh, look who's there. The first choice of Irvin. We have Womtong here in Saruman. So the gang is here. Shilob against the world, boys. Shilob against the world. Shield up against the Isengard heroes. Tunnel? Ah, it's available, yes. Can get away. What is the range of that ability? Uh, map wide, anywhere. Oh, okay, so you can. But you need to have vision, right? You, you can't click on a uh, dark area. Yes, yes. Okay. You need vision. Okay, at this point. He's trying to save the builder, going with all the units, I think, topside to deal with the one half troll. Ah, he, that is also Azok. Uh, who, 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 yeah, I don't know. I think he has enough units now to just right click on the fortress. They have also upgrades, a couple of them at least. Did he go for the heavy armor? Let me check. And uh, no, he didn't go for the heavy armor, he only went for the forge blades. Okay, Warchan will be used, not very good. He was missing many units. Oh, he's clumping against Shilov. Oh, Ouch. oh my god. Oh, my. oh, he's gonna die anyway. But nice, nice hit. He was trying to get away, but was not able to do that. Okay. 
Watch is also ready. Not gonna do be not gonna be effective against the Fort Presto. Oh, Saruman is taking way too much damage. Maybe use that plus. Oh my God, oh he's my gonna God. be taken down. These games. I mean, Mr. Smog literally gained so much resources from that fight by killing everything there. You know, every hero. I don't know if Lurz is still around. I think it's not gonna be enough to take down the fortress, guys. He's gonna use Whiteman of the Unland Special Summon as well. Really? Yeah, he's fully committing to that. Use Watcher. Can we just... Eldro here is laughing in the, in the chat, you know, it's Observer. What the heck? Oh my god, boys. It's Why? crazy. And Mr. Smog is building more Fissure now. Oh, come on. Thank you for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Zoripan91. Thank you. And the thing is... <laughs> okay, he has Ballistas now. Okay, it's the time to shine now. Ballistas. I think he has two Ballistas. Each of them has to shoot like two times. And it's gonna be gone. Okay, I think one more shot from each. Yeah, one more shot. There we go. The fortress has been finally destroyed. Normally I don't say something like this, but this was obvious that this game is over. Mr. Smog has been defeated and he literally fight until the very end. <laughs> and now we're gonna jump into the game number six, which might be able to even the score again between those two players. If Mr. Smog wins the next game, he will be the winner of the Christmas tournament. 3-2. Yes, Imperialist. Now I'm, I want my points. Yeah. All right, boys. Beautiful. Okay. One second, though. Can I do that real quick? Um. Okay, first of all, I'm going to edit the scoreboard. Remember, we have only two more maps left in the pool. One of them is Fort of Ice, and the other one is Danes of Lindon. But just in case, we're gonna spin our wheel again. There we go. We're gonna remove Forts of Ice and Tree. And the next game will be played on the map Plains of Lindon, boys. So, Forts of Ice and the, the most played map is actually gonna be the last game. The last map for the last game. If we're gonna see a last game, if Mr. Smog doesn't win this one, the last game will be played on the normal map. Okay, guys. We get the points now from betting. Here we will have Imperialist. I mean, Imperialist has to win this now, no matter what. <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah, I hope to. I hope to see seven games, just like in the World Championship. It was quite nice. Okay, guys, the bets are open. Okay, looks like Imperialist wants a break. Yeah, let's take one minute break, maybe, or? Mm -hmm. I think it sounds like a good plan. Okay. And we're gonna jump right into the game number six now. Uh, it looks like Imperial is gonna stick up with Elves again. Um, the next map is going to be... Plains of Lindon. Alright. Uh, sorry, take welcome to the stream. C Knights, dude, welcome. Guys, we have 90, over 90 viewers all the time, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, for not leaving us alone. We have potentially two more games left. This might also be the last game, by the way, if Mr. Smog ends up winning that one on the map Plains of Lindon against the Alvin faction. Mr. Smog himself gonna pick random again. And we are really jumping. Tempting fate, I think. So he's hoping for Mordor or something, but we have seen already he lost against Mordor with Elves on the map Erich. With, with the Elves. And the matchup is gonna be Elves against Isengard. Pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. And the first time we see this matchup also in this Grand Finals. On the top side of the map we have the green Isengard player Mr. Smog. Was so far picking exclusively random all games. And on the bottom side, we have also the green Elven play Imperialist. Unfortunately, they have the same colors almost. So we can't really see the differences by watching the minimap. Which is kind of a big feels bad, man. I don't like it, to be honest. But yeah. What do you think about the early barracks, Solas? 
Uh, yeah, it's okay. I think he just wants to creep the troll. And I think Smok... What he usually does in this matchup, because we play that one. Um, he just sends in his Uruk swords straight away. War chance. He doesn't care. He just sends it in and wants a farm kill, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you defend that, then it's already pretty good. Cam? But usually, the follow-up to this fast Rex from the elves is archers. And I think with archers, you can't defend it properly, as weird as that sounds. I think you first of all need swords to body block. So yeah. this might be good for Smog. I think so as well, because the Urukai, they are so tanky with the whole ground stand shield wall and the buff of the Warchan, obviously, all stacks, and they're gonna be almost unkillable, even if you are using the Riding Call of defensively. Mm. But it's gonna be okay when you are taking the treasure from the creep. You know, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be the end of the world. So let's hope that works. Yeah. He's luring the troll away from the creep. And as the troll is returning to the cave. Oh, that's a bad creeping, I think. Mm, yeah. It's a bit Look, the units are scared. It's gonna work. Okay. Aggressive stance to maximize the damage output. Almost one shot in the troll. Nice creeping here from Imperialist. And like Solas was predicting, it's right. The Urukai are leading forwards. And the second unit from Mr. Smog will be those crossbow men. Oh, is he coming from this uh, lane? Is he going to see it? Yeah, yeah, he's kind of come from this one. But uh -oh. I think that's good for the elf. Yeah, because he's going to see it he's... before. Pretty nice, actually. Um, unless Mr. Smog somehow... He doesn't see it yet. He doesn't see them. They are fog of war. Yeah. Oh, okay. He didn't see them. He's going to see them now, but maybe. Did the elf see him? No, he didn't see him that yet. But he's okay. being in position now with two archers. Yeah. Okay, that's really good. A long way to walk from the Uruk for the Urukai. Don't use word chant. Don't use it. Oh my god. He needs to use rallying call though still. I wouldn't. I think I sacrifice one tree and do a counterattack. Oh, he's ah. on, only using it on one. And the worst thing would be if you still end up losing the Malon tree. I think that's gonna be the case. Because nice positioning yeah. here in between the structures. Clumping pretty nicely, making sure every single Urukai from the battalion is able to attack. And, you know, it would not change anything if he wouldn't use the running call. He would use it, lose it anyway, and afterwards he would yeah. be able to defend. Exactly. But sometimes it is the pressure, it is sometimes like the panic move. Uh, he will be able to deal with the Urukai. He was also able to creep. He's taking the second creep for himself with the Spike Man, which is not bad. Yeah, really funny actually. Smok was about to move to that warg lair first with those two units, but then he decided to go for the troll as well. So actually, Imperialist gets this creep. Yeah, so two creeps taken, which is really mm. nice. Has now two power points collected after also dealing with the Urukai. The stable is up, and we're gonna get some lancers now. But remember, Smok was able to see the stable with the Urukai, so yeah. he can react to that. Okay. Yeah, as Elf, you should just attack now. Yeah. Definitely. It's moving forward, two archers, two pikemen, and one of them is almost level yeah, two and a half actually, really close to level three. Expanding, making more malon trees. Rallying call and warchan both gonna be on cooldown for the next fights. Smog is mm -hmm. gonna be able to take down the troll. That means we will have only one creep left, and it is the work at the left side of the map, Plains of Lindon. Okay, horses joining with the army. In the meantime, also some peasants moving in, and also the war riders gonna join. But he has enough pikemen, if he micros okay. them nicely. Nice move here from Imperialist using the trees, getting yeah, invisible with those units, and positioning himself right in front of the Uruk pit, which is also smart. Yeah, popular move. But I don't like the way that the pikemen are off position. I mean, look yeah. at this. But Smok doesn't know, because yeah. he can't see where he the archers see them. are. Okay, I think now you should just leave as a... Yeah, you like, don't want to overcome it. I think he's gonna snipe a couple of those Urukai as they are coming out of the pit, but I agree with you, he needs to disengage now. But peasants are lurking around, oh, they might be able to snipe builder. one of those. He gets a builder. Oh, that's really nice. Rallying call will be used, driving into oh, the bike man. Uh, Oof, yes. Nice. Oh, mm -hmm. if you would catch the crossbow man, that would be like a dream. But the warp riders the are dying. Are... Yeah. Okay, and the peasants will get a farm, I think. Yeah, there are no more warp riders, they're not gonna be in time. He's quitting a second one, and that game is looking good for Imperialist boys. Yes. 
the pikemen from Isengard from Mrs. Mok are leading forwards, though. They might be able to take down one of those Malone trees. Five power points collected by the album player could potentially go for the heal. And, yeah, let's see. I mean, the, the good thing is, the crossbow man, when they're gonna come out from the Uruk pit, they're gonna just get killed in a second. Ah, uh, the deja vu. Do you see what Smok is building right now? Oh, he's building Ballista expansion. Yeah, I think he learned that from my game against him in the tournament. Those yeah. worked pretty well. Okay, six power points collected by the Helven players. A massive lead over three power points leads. I mean, this is the best performance in the series so far from Imperialist. I hope he's gonna mm -hmm. be able to snowball, and we might be hopefully able to see a game number seven. Another furnace will be taken down. Yeah. Gun, uh, those black orcs were actually able to take down a couple of those Malon trees. Nice speed here into the fortress from the Alvin player. Pretty damn good. He can also capture this in for himself if he really wants to. Hmm. Oh, the builder from Alvin player almost got killed here from the black orcs. It's pretty low. Alright, so on the paper. I'm just gonna say it. Of course, this game is pretty over. If everything by the Elf is done properly, Isengard shouldn't come back. Now we need to take the Imperialist factor and see how much he can mess up in the lead. Yeah. I mean, Imperialist is, you know, definitely, we can we can feel it. He's really under pressure. He's, perform, mm -hmm. he's really uh, performing quite low in this series against Mr. Smog. He was doing much, much better, better job in the series before that. Um... But this game is, he's doing a great job so far, didn't make any major mistakes. In the meantime, uh, all the units from, oh, the builder has to be careful from the Alvin player, he's running into the army, kinda. What is he doing? Oh, wow. Oh, he was just sacrificing. I mean, but there is no defense. At least he knows, he knows where it is at least. Yeah. There is no defense right now, offensive rallying call, mm -hmm. let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Crossbowmen are getting, they can get just trampled down, and that's gonna be the plan. Yep. Oh, that's gonna be nice. He might be able to take down a lot of those furnaces, and the Uruk pit is gonna go down also, as well. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be a great push. It looks like Mr. Smok doesn't care because he's pushing for a he's going for an offensive push by himself. Even yeah. though I don't think that this is gonna be super effective. Yeah, maybe you should send all the elven archers back now. Yeah. Because I mean, if you don't do anything about that, you might be losing many many Malon trees. But the attack of the elven player is just gonna be much more effective. Yeah, he also has held you now. Oh, that's pretty nice. Uh, would you go f and try to kill the expansions here with the pikemen? The fortress expansions? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, uh, maybe he's no. scared because he might be afraid of potential war riders and he doesn't want to leave the archers unprotected. Yeah, just kill the last furnace. Yeah. On the other side, offensive war chant from Mr. Smog, trying to deal, at, you know, at least a bit damage. The lands that are returning. Haldir is putting on the swords. And what is that? Enshrouding Mist defensively. Nice micro here from Smog. Lancers are diving into the pikeman, and the second one is sacrificing himself as well. But don't lose Haldir, please. Yeah. He's being around. Why would you not just use the range attack? Yeah. And now he's returning with his army, which is a ma major mistake, I think. He doesn't really need to. He can keep up the pressure, in my opinion. Well, there isn't much to pressure, to be fair. I mean, maybe he could just place himself again, you know, in front of the Uruk pits and try to snipe. But yeah. the Ballista might be yeah. disturbing. Haldir level 2, boys. So, three more levels away from getting the leadership, which is good. Since Isengard went for the bats anyway, so he will have to debuff oh. for the next fight. Go walk, riders. Oh, okay. never mind, he gets not punished for that. Mrs. Mock has to take down those, you know, Malone trees, because Elven players 625 command points against 375, so it's a massive lead. And like Sola said, if everything goes, you know, like it should go, uh, this game should be won by the Elven player, but he needs to sooner or later make some ends, because without the ends, taking down the fortress with these expansions would be, will be quite, quite tough. Mm -hmm. Oh, he doesn't watch the War Riders. At the inn. Alpha Battalion is gone. Is he gonna go for the Black Orcs? But he's being... Oh, he has really low command points. Uh, is this gonna be another five minutes to watch the Fortress die now? I think so. <laughs> I don't think that Mr. Smok is gonna, you know, surrender. Never give up, never surrender. Featuring okay. Mr. Smok. 
the player from Ukraine. So, Shanks, I was asking the chat before what everyone is eating for Christmas. What are you getting? Oh, I don't know. Whatever my wife makes me, you know, <laughs> I, okay. I, I can't. I can choose. But oh. we will have. We will have for the Christmas. By the way, guys, have a Christmas in you know in advance because I don't think that we will be streaming more before the Christmas. It's gonna be literally in two days from now, right? And we're gonna have uh, events with a fa with the family. It's gonna be the first Christmas of my daughter, by the way. Mm. You know, and we're gonna have some time together. Nothing too crazy. Pretty small, you know, like my cousins, my aunts, gonna gonna come. Mm. I'm super happy about the Christmas time because my the company I'm working for has now two weeks break, guys. So I'm not working for two weeks. It's been a long time since the summer break. I didn't have a single day off. Uh, that's and almost like school time. Yeah, Two exactly. Weeks. That's pretty nice. I'm happy about it. Okay, guys, the fight continues. And um, all he needs to do is making ends, you know? I think everything else doesn't make too much sense. Yes, 100% the controller of this game. He's expanding quite nicely. As Hal did a lot of archers. And Lancers, everything. Oh, look. He was able to kill... Never mind. I was thinking that he, these are the pikes from him because the color is the same, but... These are Urukai. Like Gimli would say, those are not orcs, those are Urukai. Hmm. Uh, Mist is gonna be ready for the next fights. Warchant, Krevine and Rallying Call as well. Another furnace will be taken down. Both the ends under control from the Elven player. No, never mind, this is under control from... Smoke. <laughs> Just leave. <laughs> he, he, he can't see that, right? He can't see that. I know. I know. You should. Okay, rallying call was used offensively, and and guys, 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 we're gonna see a uh, game number seven, the tiebreaker, the final game. And uh, let me let me tell you that much. That this can go either way. I mean, Mr. Smoke is always picking random. All it takes for Imperial is having a lucky matchup. You know. Even though, even though, I need to add that he had already one leg a matchup, he pretty much threw and he lost mm -hmm. with the with them elves against Mordo on the map Erech. But if he brings the same performance like he did in this game, and in this game he was playing really good. Another builder from Mrs. Mock has been taken down, by the way. Really? He just... His army just got destroyed and we still... Yeah, we but still he's going for the ants now, finally. He's gonna bring <laughs> now some siege power. And then it's just gonna, it's a matter of time. He's going for the tribute, for the for the daddy of the ants, for the protector of Fangorn Forest. The ants are going to war, boys. I actually watched the two towers with girlfriend today. First time, I think. Really? You, you first time watched the two towers? First time. You are kidding, MQS. How dare you? Kick someone, no, ban is. someone in quest from the chat, please. I think he means his girlfriend. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, her first time. But first time watching two towers for the other first time. I'm joking, joking. That's too personal. <laughs> Let's not get into it. <laughs> you gotta keep that family friendly, by the way. Last game is gonna be Fort of Ice. Yes, that's gonna be very good. Oh, Mirkputs are also on the field. They are so strong. Smashing everything. Crossbowmen are dying in a second. Okay, tributes. Uh, he's capped command point wise, right? Yeah, he's capped. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. Just sacrifice units at this point. Or send them to the fortress. And the problem is that they are at the middle of Galadriel. That means they are recovering over time. He's gonna be capped forever if you're not gonna sacrifice one of these. It will actually be Christmas by the time we're done, I think. Yeah. I mean, I can totally understand that you don't want to leave, you know, you... I mean, we have seen this already. We have already called that games also on the map array pretty, you know, often GG. And then somehow he came back to the game and he ended up winning. So I think he's just trying to rely on the possible mistakes Imperialists might make in this game. Like oh, sacrificing the whole army. Okay. But... At this point, I don't even think that you need ends, you know? Mr. Smog needs siege hammers and underman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have seen this already. Oh my god, you missed that game so that was one that was the one of the craziest games I've ever seen. That was I in the it. in the quarter. Did you watch it? 
Yeah. And then mm -hmm. he lost because he didn't have any barracks on the field. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Yet, like all the army with the elves against dwarves. By the way, dwarves, I really hope that we see a dwarf game in the last eagles are coming anyway. <laughs> I hate both players now, Bryden, my friends. Don't, don't get, yeah. don't lose your patience. Just with me versus Mark someone. He's not leaving. I didn't know I have to make barracks. Yes, yeah, Scarry Moon. Well, was that you? <laughs> he was. It was against in Limbo 52, I think. You against in Limbo 52. All right, guys. Mrs. Mog will be defeated. And that means we're going to jump into the game number seven. The last game in the best of seven on the map, Falls of Aizen. And so far, we had a really rough series. Like a couple of really long extended games, which should not last that long because the players refuse to actually finish or end. But again, at the end of the day, the winner is going to get $100, so I can understand if you don't want to leave. In the last game, who would have thought that this is going to be that close? Everything is possible, boys. Uh, Foy. Normal. Alright, we're going to edit the scoreboard. One last time. 3-3. And let me check who was betting on Mr. Smog, actually. I can't close this one because we're not going to have any more spins. Uh, Imperialist was able to win the previous game. And we're going to open one more contest. Who will win the next game? On the one side, Imperialist. And this is not going to be who will win the next game. This is going to be the question who's going to be the winner of the Christmas tournament. Because there is no more games after this one. So, Smog... I know Smok, he is gonna try his hardest to win. The bets are open, by the way, boys. You are able to bet on the outcome of the game now. Okay, Imperialist needs one minute. What do you think about the series so far? What is your prediction for the matchup so last for the last game? And more importantly, what, who you think is gonna be the winner of, at the end of the day of the Christmas tournament? Um, I think... We're gonna have Elves versus Mordor again. I can just feel it. And at this point, I can't tell you who's gonna win. Anything can happen. Guys, what do you think in the chat? Let me know, please. Let me say the names. Who's gonna win the tournament? Who's gonna win the, win the finals? So, Solas, I'm also undecided, really. I can't really tell, guys. I mean, I have seen many, many shenanigans in this series, guys. I, I know someone else gonna ask me now in the in the comment section of YouTube. By the way, if you're watching it at YouTube, guys, don't forget to leave the like and uh, subscribe for more content on the YouTube channel. Uh, I think Irby has best chances. <laughs> Solas wins. <laughs> Imperialist easy win. Benzi, obviously, a big fan. If the next game is drawn out, there is no real winners. Made the best Rusky win. I don't, but, you know, Mrs. Mock is not Russian, right? He's from Ukraine. Yeah. All the same. <laughs> you said you're gonna upload my game to YouTube, but you didn't. <clears throat> what game, my friend? I don't know, man. I, I, I had to so much. I had to upload so many stuff. I might be forgetting one of these. You know, sorry for that. Um, oh. He's oh, picking England. That's the first, first time Smok is picking. And you know what that means. He's going for the... the he want to go for the victory, guys. He's like, okay, I'm done picking random. That again means, unfortunately, in seven games, we didn't see one single time the Man of the West faction and one single time the Dwarf faction. Okay. Engmar no. against Elves. Engmar used to be the best counter to elves. Now I think it's pretty even. There is a lot of room where you can mess up as an Engmar. Yeah, and the chat is so smart, guys. You see that? I was opening the bets five minutes ago and they, were, they are waiting until the matchup is picked, you know? <laughs> yeah. Before they bet. On the left side, we have Mr. Smog picking Engmar faction for the first time in this tournament, in this series, picking a faction besides random. And on the right side, we have the green elven player Imperialist. The final game, which is gonna... Decides who's gonna get to one hundred dollars. Archangel Otto, welcome to the stream. Otto, how are you doing today? 
I appreciate your sign up at uh, at the Christmas tournament, by the way, Otto. I am hoping that you will be also signing up for the World Championship 2020. Otto is one of the BFME2 experts, by the way, guys. And he was also participating in this tournament, which I'm really grateful for. To see some new guys from other games participating in Rise of the Wish King tournaments. Okay, nice adjustment here from Imperialist. He's making his third farm in Fortress range against Engma. Yeah. Which, as we all know, can be, you know, a big factor if the Thrallmaster is in Fortress range and gets sniped. It can be a big deal. By the way, guys, if Mr. Smog wins this game, he's obviously going to be the winner of the Christmas tournament, but that's going to be the second win of Mr. Smog in this year. Two big tournaments, actually. The one was the World Championship, and the second one will be the Christmas if he wins that game. That means in total he was playing Rise of the Witch King and gaining $300 this year. <laughs> so, full-time job, by the way. 300 bucks is a lot of cash in Ukraine, I've been told. So maybe next 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 year we can get Mr. Smog being full time job Rise of the Wish King player as well as what do you think? <laughs> Not if I have something to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's we're gonna have. I mean, by the way, guys, because we have almost 100 viewers right now, quick information for you. So we made some decisions uh, about the next year. So you know, this year we had a lot of tournaments going on, and most of them were with cash prizes. So instead of making more tournaments with cash prizes, we will we will make more tournaments but with no cash prizes and then we will have only one tournament one big tournament it's gonna be world championship 2020 with a lot of cash prize so instead of having 100 there 50 there 200 there we're gonna have at least 500 dollar cash prize tournament for the world championship 2020 which is oh. something oh wait we have a fight around this area smock used the war chant and imperialist didn't and i think that's great for the elf Imperialist didn't, okay. Mm -hmm. He still has it for the defense now. Yeah. Wolf Riders that early, he was also able to secure the creep for himself on the left side of the river, plus the treasure. You get around 300 if I'm not wrong. Okay, now just a clean defense. Should be able to Very defense. good. Nice positioning good. also with the pikes in between. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I mean, the rallying call was premature. Should have waited, but... It's okay. Now don't move out. Stay in your base. What are you doing? You want to play a bit more defensively here. Mm -hmm. Okay, he wants to hide in the trees, but that's that's really not much. Yeah, he's trying to stall a bit. Stable is up for Imperialist. He's going now for some Revendal Lancers. Okay, okay, he's going home. Run. Good. Yeah. I mean, Engma player has the upper hand right now in terms of units. He has Extroverts, Gandabad Warriors, and Wolf Riders, and some Wolf Packs. Two battalions, actually, they're gonna be good against Pikemen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, he might get caught a little bit here trying to creep. Lance is coming. Pikes are arriving, though. Yeah, Pikes will be just in time. He might be able to get a nice trample. Oh, nice one, actually. Still dealt a decent amount of damage. Now uh, disengage. The wolves will deal a lot of damage now. Uh, it's not that bad, right? He was able okay. to save more than half a battalion. Oh, position yourself. Smoke is going for it anyway. He's committing. Second battalion of Pikes are coming. We're going to see a fight around this area. Buff is being on cooldown for both the players. Uh, not too bad for the elf. Nice positioning here with the pikeman, he's killing so much, Troll has been taken down. Nice. The wolf packs are being the target from the archers, which is smart, because they are smashing your pikeman. There we go. Now the... Now the elven archers, they should be easily able to take down. The Trolls are being the targets, there we go. More wolf packs oh, are coming. Oh, good trample, good trample on the extra yeah, as well. Yeah, very well done here. And the pikes are all about to die, he can go now for another trample to clean up everything. There we go, nice one. The Troll has to... Never mind. Smoke mm -hmm. is trying to save those trolls. The knights, they should not allow that. He has two of them. Okay, so... Well... Calvin is going to be ready for the next fight, though. Yeah, that's normal. But uh, the armies are pretty much reset now. The elf cannot do a lot because he only has archers left. But Engma also lost mm, pretty much all of his wolves. Yeah. And he lost also all the trolls. He was trying to save. He was able to save one of them. One of the extrovers. Mm -hmm. He will be able to respawn. 
Oh, another nice trample here, I think. Quick. Yeah. Gets another extra. Oh, tally. nice one. Very well done here. On the bright side for Smog, he was able to secure both the um, war creeps around the river, left and right, yeah. and going for the third one to boost his eco. Yeah. That's why he has the wind already. But yeah. Imperialist also wants to get his work there now. He's moving for it. He has put a lot of archers already. Uh, going for the well to heal up with this almost dead battalion. He was able to save the Lancer and the pikeman. Going for the second mm -hmm. barracks now. Rallying Cole is gonna be ready for the next fight, as well as Warchant and the Felwind from the Angler player Mr. Smug. Nice focusing here with those wolves on the Malon tree. Mm, but they are not nice dealing playing. too much damage. Good. Very careful playing here. Oh! Almost lost a Tram Master Battalion here. It mm. was randomly sending forward. That's the worst feeling, by the way. <laughs> If you are if you are losing your trout without without transferring them to the units, troll of the Kingsman mm. and troll involved team. He's making a lot of those wolf wolf packs. That's also something we don't see that quite often. I mean, he's spamming them pretty much. He has like three battalions. He's going for another yeah. one. Yeah, it's very good for map control. It's it's a lot safer, I think, than just double hall spam. Because would you, you can go also... for the heal now with the Alvin player uh, with the Alvin faction, or would you try to save for the intruding miss anyway? Good question. I think the heal you need to decide spontaneously during a fight, if it's worth it, but otherwise you definitely want the mist. Okay. Smok wants a big attack now, oh, but as long as... it's a big army. It's a big army from Smok. Mist. In the statue range, I think he's fine. Yeah, he has Lorien uh, warriors, pikemen, they are recovering slowly but surely at the well. Double barracks, so he will get some more reinforcements over the time. No heroes just yet on the field for any of those players. And <clears throat> let's see how much damage Smog will be able to deal. This Malon tree is a goner for sure. Hmm. He's making an arrow tower again. It's a yeah. really weird habit. That's, I mean, a lot of resource kind of wasted. Mm -hmm. You don't okay. get any benefits from that, but a bit more durability at the fortress. At the early stage, it's not very important, but you might need it later on. But later on, you will also have more resource income. Oh, running into the pikemen with the wolf riders. Ooh. Okay, but might be a nice mistake. catch here. The horses are disengaging. They should be able to. Uh, he needs to now fight for it. He can win the fight. He has a lot of archers. But Felwind can do some work. Eight power points almost collected by the Alvin player. Yeah, Smok has to get out of here, I think. I mean, he has a lot of units, but most of them are only pikemen, so they're not going to be very yeah. strong against the army. I mean... Okay, Rallying Call will be used. Yeah. And yeah, smart move by Smok just yeah. disengaging and using the advantage of the buff. That's that why you're not rushing. Elf, that means Elf has to stay on his side of the map for at least the next four minutes or so. Because if he attacks now, then Smog will lose more chance. Careful here. Um, Maybe use Felwind on the on the lancers and kill off them. Oh, now he uses War chant. Now he wants to fight. Oh, that's a bad fight to take. Oh, nice Felwind though. The Wolf Riders. Yeah. There are not many left from the Wolf Riders, so the. Archers, they should be... I don't know what's happening, actually. Fiesta. Ka you were asking fights. earlier. I think this is a situation where you should buy heal. Yeah. He went for the heal now. He can use wow, it. Wow, he's it. destroying him. Yeah. Nice heal. Nice timing. He's getting more power points anyway. Seven, almost eight power points collected for Imperialist. A massive victory here for the fight at the bottom what's left happening? side of the map. He's winning, guys. He's winning. Yeah, and... This is looking very good for the Russian player Imperialist, guys. I mean, it's never over when there's a Waldor on the field in this matchup, I think. Um, can and still come back. And gonna also have some Dark Rangers now joining the fight. Ah. He's also upgrading the troll involved into level 2, so he wanna go for the Snow Trolls. Yeah, now don't attack as else. I think that's very risky. You have no rallying call. I don't think he has to mist, but no, he doesn't has have Waldor. Very yeah. risky, man. He doesn't have the mist, he doesn't have the buff, he doesn't have to heal. He doesn't have any heroes. Uh, Waldo is go gonna home. buff those units. Go home. He can summon wolf riders and crush them. Oh, he gets, he's getting snow troll. He's getting snow trolls, yeah. Go home. And there are not many pikemen. There's half of that battalion of pikemen, but that's it. Snow trolls, oh, they can demolish is. everything. Nice move here on the, around the trees. And he's still killing a lot of stuff because Angma player is not able to see what's going on. 
Yeah, actually very good usage of those two Lorien swords. He has one in the back of Smog's base and one in the north. Yeah. At least he's getting farm kills. And the lenses nice. are focusing on the map control as well. And look at the map control, guys. Yeah. I mean, he has 920 command points against 625. That's a massive lead. He is going for the Enshrouding Mist as well, which is going to be ready for the next fight. It's going to negate the lead issue from Waldo, plus lead and off the enemy units. He's getting level 2 farm in the back of Smog's base. That's a huge kill. Yeah. For free. Smog doesn't go for a defensive move here, giving up the yeah. mill. No, Did he go for the no banner mistake. carrier? No, he didn't go for the banner carrier. Smog's army is still stronger. Make no mistake. He will crush him in a fight. He needs to be patient. What do you would you go at this point for the banner carrier? Because it's not gonna only yes. benefit the Dark Rangers, but also Snotros. Yes, yes, definitely. Run. Definitely run now. Belvin is gonna be ready. He has frozen lands. Okay. Frozen lands. That's gonna be interesting. I mean frozen land is a, a leadership and a spell. And mm -hmm. it can ne be negated from the Enshrouding Mist. This the yes, buff you are gaining. Unlike the Tainted mm -hmm. Land and Elven Wood. Mm -hmm. Also, a very cute Malon tree from Imperialist in the where the war glare was on Smog side. Yeah. I like it. I like it. You mean the you mean the move or do you mean the player? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Alright, he's he was buying the banner carry upgrades. Uh, upgrading the, those ranges to level 2. Thank you so much for the follow, Crazy Eren. Appreciate it. The next fight is yeah. going to be massive. But he has to, you know, you don't want to fight around the statue, I think. I think this is one of Smog's biggest weaknesses as a player. Now he's going full tunnel vision with one big attack. And in the meantime, the Lancers are going to ravage his economy. Yeah. At least they should. And coming home. the long shot should not be doing too much. They will have double buff with the rallying call, and yeah. he's using war chants now. Big war chants. There's no pikes. Where's the pikes? Ooh, go in, go in, go in, go in. Oh, frozen lands. It's gonna get negated. Oh, Felvin's long shots. Trample. Uh, what a fight. Nice one. Nice. Oh, oh he's running into the pike man with the lancers. What is he doing? Ah, uh, it's fine. All the all the dark rangers are gone. Yeah, I mean they were off position again. <laughs> what a fiesta. Yeah, Clown Fiesta actually, guys. <laughs> I mean, look at, look at, he has also Mirk Boots now. Oh my goodness, if he goes for a counter attack, mm -hmm. he can do so much work. Oh, Snow Trot's getting a good trample, but they're just gonna die now, right? Yeah, they are, you don't wanna be over trampling. <laughs> I think the Lancers can chase him down, I think they're faster. Yeah, it looks like yeah. it. Ouch, that's painful. Okay. So what is the call now? Frozen land is on cooldown, and so is yeah. Felwind and War Chance. And you need to make a tower. That's his only hope. <laughs> I mean, on the bright side, he has still Waldo on the field and the leadership yeah. on the side. But he needs to now face against many archers, and some of them are even Mirkwoods. Yeah. Okay, that's not a strong army though from the elf. Oh, he gets a builder though. That's good. But I love the I love the way he's you know Imperialist is now fighting for the map control at the bottom, top, yeah. and middle sides. So he's Super interactive. Glorfindel is joining the fight as well now, from the fortress. Uh, he has eight and a half power points, almost nine power points collected. Full command points, by the way, that early into the game. Seven fifty, and apparently Imperialist only needs a couple of minutes in you know start rolling. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite quite good performance in, from Imperialist this tournament so far. Anyway, he was undefeated. He didn't lose a single game until the finals. And he was also Orphan. fighting against Fairy and stuff, so he didn't have any easy games. I think in this game, Smog's weakness really came through. The one big attack he just did, did nothing. But if he had split up on the sides of the but, map... But look, 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 there he, has, he has no pike, man. Two battalions of... Yeah. Ouch. Imperialist, what the hell? No pikes? Oh my god. Use charge attack, maybe? One of them doesn't didn't use charge attack, I think. This one. But he was able to get the statue up on the fields. Lord, Lord Findel has to be super careful. There are too many pikemen. Ooh, he's losing everything. It's like, you know... the. It's but. not like the one player is performing quite well, but it's like the guy is... It's like, at the end of the day, the question, who's gonna throw more? Oh, wow. He bought an arrow volley that did nothing. Oh, he was really investing 10 power points for that? Yes, oh, he did nothing. nothing. He's trying to beat the snow trolls into it, but... Oh, he got a trample on the lance on the rangers, though. Yeah. 
but they are all alive, all of them actually. So they will I be mean, recovering. I mean, at the end of this fight, a lot of shit died there. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a one-sided fight. And from the fight, Mr. Smog was able to collect so many power points. So last, he was he's sitting on 16 power points now. And yes, Imperialist was also able to collect power points, but 10 of them he was pretty much whizzing okay. into the arrow volley. The action isn't over. He's still killing a level 2 mill in the north with the pikes. That's a big deal. Yeah. And by the time Mr. Smog will be able to put counter pressure, but look, the army from the oven play is already recovered. Yeah. Yes, a lot of archers, some mid boots in, in between, getting more and more. His resource income like crazy is full command points, boys. And again, Smog is doing the frontal counter attack. This isn't gonna work against elves. You need to kill the trees at the sides. Oh, Blight! Blight Felvins! Okay, Ooh, I that's... shut up. I shut up. <laughs> that's gonna do some work, man. Ooh, use long shots? It's on cooldown. Can't be used. Can't used. But the whites this are getting. Can't be it. Ooh, he's killing everything. Oh my! This can't be it, man. <laughs> this is crazy. What is happening, chat? Oh my! Look this. The army of the dead. <laughs> there we go. I take my statement back. I take everything back, but still. Oh this is my not... goodness. But Blight. Smok doesn't have many farms, man. He has like five farms right now. But the Blights, there are so many ghosts, whites and stuff. They killed Imperialist everything. has a thousand command points. Smok has 550. Yeah. Waldo was just summoning the Hillman as well. He's killing the Dark Rangers. Every time he kills them, he gets a lot of resources because of the pillage ability. The stable will be taken down. Okay, but... He's gonna use the Frozen Lands now. He's not gonna die here. No, he's not gonna die. He has a lot of ex tower expansions. But still, that, but that's, that was a major damage, you know? If use he, the cloak on the Mirkwood. Yeah. Try to save them. He's yeah. gonna use it. There you go. There you go. And there is no way Engmar can actually reveal them. He still has a thousand command points. He still has that many farms. Yeah. Don't forget. And if he can take down the level 2 barracks, I think that's a really great push. He's gonna take down the level 3 Malone 3 first, which is really nice. He's gonna finally put him maybe below 1000 command points. The thing is, he has a lot of command points, but he can't really do much right now. He needs to expand, but Smoke um, is literally inside his base right now. Does Smoke have a builder? I don't think he can recover at all. He has no builder. Oh, really? And he can't afford to make so. one. Right? He has no builder. I don't see anyone. So this was a very all-in attack. He needed to do so much damage with that. I mean, he was dealing so much damage, but was awesome. definitely not enough because because of the resource income, Imperialist actually will be able to recover from that. Yeah. And he has so much resources, he can just spam more and more Mirkwoods, and that's being the case right now. But again, he's not making any pikemen still, going for the third barracks. Smok is being in a really kind of weird situation yeah. He's going for a builder now and building some, you know, defense around the fortress. So if Smog would have a builder, I think oh Glorfindel might be in trouble. Blade of Purity gonna be ready soon though. He has a builder now. Okay, but this attack, what's it gonna do? He doesn't have another blight. <laughs> Yeah, he can't do nothing there. Um, but I, I think if Mr. Smog would have a build-up during the last fight, you know, yeah. dealing damage and expanding at the same time, it could be much, much better. Exactly. He was dealing great amount of damage, but at the same time, he was able, he was not able to do anything around his own side. Mm -hmm. And so. at the end of the fight, even if you take down so many units with the Blights, Blight has a huge cooldown, by the way. Yeah. Um, that blight was the best blight he could have ever hoped for, and yeah. it was still not nearly enough, given yeah. how all in he was. Because you need to fight for the map control, and I think I agree with Sodas. So far, Mr. Smog was exclusively using the mid side pathway. He was pretty much sending his units right through the middle to the side of Imperialist, and Imperialist on the other side was doing a greater job in expanding around the side lanes, which obviously you know gave him the chance to get more command points, more resource income. So yeah, this is the moment where Elf can actually just grab his whole army and march across the map. Yeah. It will work. And he's gonna have Eagle Summon. I think... I'm not sure, does Arrow Volley lead to Ents as well? Maybe he can get those too. Oh, Snow oh. Troll's caught. Nice. Nice one. He's gonna be able to take down the entire battalion, gaining so much power punch from it. 
has 15 now almost, full command points, or pretty much the last five minutes. I can feel, okay. literally feel the pressure on Mr. Smok. This guy is, yeah. he wanna win this game, by the way. He wanna, he's gonna, he's shaking right now, guys. He's shaking. He, he only has one long shot. That's not enough. Yeah, only one battalion is not gonna be enough to burst them down because Rallying Call is gonna be available. Glorfindel is also on the fields, level almost five. Gonna be also and really hard to deal with and it's gonna smash Eagles. the fortress. And mist and arrow volley. We have everything for the elf ready. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, this. I mean, he's trying to get enough rangers to go for a perfect long shot combination. Shoot. Again, he doesn't have any vision. He doesn't see those units around the trees. He's gonna hope oh, for it. Snow trolls. Ran through the pikes again. Not that bad. long shot did nothing. Did nothing actually. Absolutely nothing. And now. Come on, use your eagles, man. Oh, half twelve swordmen are gone. Eagles special summon is ready. Yes, however, some tower expansions around it, and the fortress being upgraded. So, and uh, level three hall of the kingsman, level three mill. So there are yeah. two level three mills. So many many units will actually be shooting at the eagles or structures. Yeah, actually, don't use eagles now. Just kill Walder, then go back, make ends. And if Engmar ever dares to attack you, then use eagles defensively. I would say. Yeah. But Glorfindel might be in trouble here. I mean, Blade of Beauty is off. But he has heal. Yeah. But on the bright side, Walder was able to survive. Continues with the attack. <laughs> Eagle special summon is ready still. He's holding oh, on it. The BM barracks in his base. Yeah. I mean, this is looking very good for Imperialis, guys. I can't and believe it. I mean, if I wouldn't see the last couple of games we are casting now with Solas, I would say it's GG. But we have seen many, many, you know, weird situations in which players were able to come back. So, Blight is loading. Blight is gonna be ready in, what, three minutes? If he can hold, or Eagles are coming. Nice rumble into the uh, into the mid -foot store. Guys, can Imperialist finally buy an Oki after this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give him fifty dollars. By the way, I'm just gonna give him yeah. fifty, and I'm gonna buy with the other fifty <laughs> a keyboard. I'm gonna not even ask him if this is. Okay, the eagles are pretty much suiciding right now. Oh, you don't want to be grouped against them. And yeah, there are just too many structures shooting. So it was not the best eagle special summon. Mm -hmm. Now he's gonna rely on ants actually to kill the fortress. Yeah, there's no coming back here. I think. Yeah, Glorfindel oh. might be in trouble. Turning. I shouldn't jinx it. I'm gonna shut up now. I mean, I'm kind of feeling bad for uh, for Mr. Smog, not gonna lie, because he was always picking random and, you know, not always getting really great match. Oh, he's diving into the... Never mind. Did you feel bad for me too? Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, but for you, I was not feeling that bad because, you know, because both players, you and Mr. Smog, was always picking random, you know? Okay. But in a scenario like this, Imperialis was always picking a faction. Mr. Smog was trying to blind counter that with random. And he was not, let, let's be honest, he was not getting the greatest matchups. I mean, he won Elf versus Mortar and he's losing Elf versus Yeah. That's quite funny. I think he had the chance to win this one. Yeah. Uh, but he made, a, he made a big mistake and he made this mistake like a couple of times. By just over committing through the middle and not expanding well enough, I think. Mm -hmm. He was hoping to finish this game. When he didn't realize, oh my god, what is happening? Why Imperialis can st st uh, still spam so many units? Because he had like so many Marlon trees all, ar all around the map. And granting him I so much resource income. I think not only Spider Riders, it's also Snow Trees that Smok really doesn't like. Yeah. They have been dying left and or right. Or covered their units in general. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where I actually can't believe now, you know, I was... I mean, this game is not over yet, but Smog needs to end, and special summon is ready now from yes. Imperialist. So. I mean, that's never gonna finish an Angmar player, because he's always gonna freeze his stuff, but... Yeah, Snowbinds. Still. But he needs to invest now 5 power points. No, he's gonna go for the Whites. Yeah, he has still enough for the... for the... Snowbinds, obviously. White is gonna be ready soon. I think he can stall a bit. Is he gonna go for the white special summon? That's the question. But I think the white's gonna get killed pretty fast against the midfoots. To me, Hillman. To me, Hillman. Rallying call. Bit overkill, but okay. 
The level 3, all of the Kingsman has been destroyed. The ants are getting taken down. White is gonna be ready very soon. Uh, with the combination of the Felvins, we have seen how much damage it can actually deal to the Alvin army. I think it's gonna delay. I don't think it's gonna be enough to deny. And yes, Felvins, Blight combination, the second it was ready. But the funny thing is there's a well, and I think it, you know, it delays the effect a little bit. It actually removes the poison. Yeah. But the poison keeps coming as well, so it helps. I mean, all he needs to do is just disengage. Mm -hmm. These are quite slow units. They can't catch you. And the second it's gone, you know the Felwind is on cooldown. You know the Blight is on cooldown. You know, there's absolutely nothing that can stop you from doing what you're doing. Um, but he needs to go for the end smooths now. Because mm -hmm. I don't think this, you know, because he has mainly archers, right? And like tier 1 pikemen. So I don't think it's gonna be enough to take down the fortress. Maybe with Claude Findel, Blade of Purity, but... I think Entmut yeah. is the way to go. Or what do you think, Solas? He, he really likes to get a thousand CP army before he makes any ends. <laughs> yeah, and then he's gonna be kept and can't make any of these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, this tournament was full, full of surprises, to be honest, you know. First of all, I like it surprised me the most after, you know, having a great performance until the semi-finals in which he was complaining about the legs and kind of suiciding two games and then calling it GG. But so far he was, you know, until that point he was doing a great job in this tournament. Imperialis undefeated. Oh, Mako, my dudes, welcome. Thank you so much for the, for the sub. Appreciate it. Mako is the maker of rune shores, in case you didn't know. Is this the Mako from Rise of Twitch King? No. No, the map Rune Shores. Oh, know Rune it? Shores. Okay. I didn't know that. Or Mirkwood Forest? Mirkwood Forest, I know that. He made that. Also for ba Battle for Middle Earth 1? No, no. The Rise of the Witch King 1v1 map. Because Mirkwood Forest in BFME 1 is a free for all map. 1v1v1v1. One one oh, okay. One. okay. For four player map, right? Mirkwood. In Rise of the Witch King, it's 1v1. Oh, I don't okay. know about. Okay, I think this is gonna be game chats, and the victory will go to the Russian player Imperialist. Nice. Holy moly! Now you are one, and you are wondering why I keep saying holy moly because I'm always surprised in this community. <laughs> like the Hobbit, an unexpected journey, journey, you know. Oh, the whole world has been killed as well. Long shot. We know Mr. Smog not gonna give up until the fortress is gonna fall. By the way, guys, as this game is over, first of all, big thanks to you guys uh, for you know for everyone who was participating in the tournaments, for everyone who was you know watching the streams and stuff. Thank you. I wish you already a great Christmas time with your family, with your friends, and. I will be probably streaming before the new year, so I'm not gonna say Happy New Year already. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. I, I, this is my first year in the Rise of the Vision community, pre pretty much. My first real year year from the start of, uh, of the year until the end. And to be honest, I was in BFME 1 community for a while, that's, uh, you can't compare that to the Rise of the Vision. All You know, I've met so many kind people. Thank you for that, guys. So does Eternal, a couple of them, other. Thank you for, I don't know how to say it in English, but thank you for welcoming me nicely and friendly to the yeah. community. Take this final for nerfing Elf GG. <laughs> Holy moly, guys. Mr. Smok defeated in the Christmas tournament in the last game against Elves. And quite interesting performance. And congratulations to Imperialist, who is, who is having the first big win in this year, as far as I know. He was having a rough time in the in the World Championship. In the semifinals, he got kicked out from Irby. And this time, I mean, this guy is 17 years old, by the way, guys. So he might be the future of Rise of the Witch King, who knows? 
So, Solas, at the end of the day, what was your feeling about this series between those two players? Let me know. Um, I think both can learn a lot from this. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I mean, the, the one thing I want to say here is I have seen those two players playing many, many times, you know, including in the tournaments, also normal games. And I can tell that much. They are playing, both of them are actually playing normally better. Again, I think this has something to do with the with the pressure of the tournament. Even though the last two games, I mean, the game on the Forts of Ice and the last game on the map Plains of Lindon, Imperialis was performing really nicely. The first five games he was playing really shabby, kinda, you know. But the last two games he was doing a great job. So... I mean, that means Imperial is gonna get now $100. I mean, $50 plus a keyboard. Right. Okay, congratulations. Congra congratulations, Imperialist. Look, even Imperialist is saying in the in the chat, GG well played, I think Elf should be nerfed. What the heck? Okay, guys. Just because of that great event, let's do something spicy. There you go. There you go, boys. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond Standards just gifted five subs. What a pirate. Alright guys, <clears throat> thank you again so much for watching, thank you Sola so much for the co-cast, it was really it. always nice with you to cast uh, the games. Let me check actually if anyone is streaming right now, we, had, we could make a big, big uh, boost. And there is someone who's streaming Age of Empires, so I think the best way to actually grow our size of the community is by sharing our game with some people who are playing some other RTS games. So. Let's actually make a big host on him, so maybe he's gonna return the favor. Thank you guys so much for watching, and see you next time.